Hello, and welcome to the second run of the Science Games Completed Rapidly. We have a handful of speed runs here for you. Uh, this year, we're doing some kind of unusual categories. We got a couple of races, uh, as well as a few traditional runs. And we're starting off with Dark Shocks, who is doing his piano run of Mist. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Dark Shocks. Uh, I'll be uh, kicking things off. Um, for, um, let me just briefly explain what a speedrun is. For those who don't know, it's essentially just beating the game as quick as possible. Uh, if enough uh, people uh, think that that's fun, they come together and they form some rules on how to do this. Uh, the most um, um, well-known concept is, uh, is a thing called any percent, which means just you try to beat the game as quickly as possible. You'll be seeing a lot of any percent runs today. You'll also see some races. Another category that we have for Mist is all pages where you collect all uh, the red and blue pages and hand them in, except for the last ones, of course. Um, and uh, you'll be seeing uh, Redicun doing a run of that. And because the any percent run itself on Mist is, is done rather quickly and rather short, right? You just uh, flip all the marker switches, get the page, enter the fireplace code. Uh, you can put some more creative spins on the thing, uh, which is what uh, I'll be presenting today. Uh, as the first run. Now, uh, uh, a quick, uh, because usually this game is played with mouse, but I'll be playing it with something else. And now let me just uh, boot up everything that I need. And then we can talk a bit about the uh, soundtrack of the game. Um, I'm pretty sure there has been a lot uh, said about the soundtrack of uh, the individual games, and I'm probably the least qualified to, to, to talk about it. Um, but uh, I'll be presenting um, a version of the soundtrack, if you will. Now, um, uh, essentially every missed uh, uh, run starts here. You turn on zip mode, um, and then you, you take control, which is what I'm going to do right now. So <laughs> I hope this works. Hi, I'm Dark Souls, and I'm going to play uh, the missed intro on the piano and we'll be controlling the cursor um, through that. Um, how does that work? Well, the, the intro in the arrangement that I have here uh, is split into four parts, uh, each starting with a different uh, uh, chord. Uh, I hope you can all hear. Uh, uh, the, the, when I play the piano, I can turn it up a little bit. So what we have is something like... Um, th that works, perfect. Okay, uh, B minor over D. Then we have something like G major. Uh, we have something like B minor over F sharp. And we have something like F sharp major. Now, as you can see, um, the cursor is moving while I'm playing these notes, which is exactly the purpose of the whole thing. Um, now, all we have to pray is that the timer will start when I enter the page, and then we're off and racing. Wonderful. Now, uh, the point of this is, of course, to go as fast as possible and not play it as beautifully as possible, um, which is why I play the uh, tritones a little uh, faster than uh, originally intended uh, in the arrangement. Maybe I should turn this down a little. Um, uh, da -da 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 -da. So, as with most any percent runs, the uh, what we're actually doing is we're just going from point to point. Um, and flipping a couple of marker switches because that's what we need to unlock the page. We can use a couple of shortcuts. If we place the mouse here, we can just hit eight times and are right in front of the next marker switch, which is awesome. Um, there's a couple of shortcuts we uh, use in the any percent run, and I am taking high inspiration from that for the piano run, including this one. Um, then we move cursor up and down again so we can abuse the cursor position at a later point, which we'll see in a moment. Now, here, if we place the cursor just between those two trees, ah, that could work, let's see. Nope, tiny bit more to the left, there we go. And now we're just on height for this marker switch. Hopefully, and all the way back, because now we go to the powerhouse. Is that enough? It was. To the marker switch. To the tree. 
And now, I have to solve the puzzle. Um, so, let's go to the clock tower. Go down. Look up. One, two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And off we go. To the left. We don't have to solve the puzzle in there because we're not visiting any ages. Well, except for except for Kadir. So all we have to do is flip all the marker switches. And now go to the dock. I hope I turned on zip mode. We'll find out in a moment. Let's go all the way back up. We'll have to take a short stop here. And the cursor's high. Essentially, what you'll be seeing, the, 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 the route we're going, will be the same route that we're going in the any percent runs, which you will see in a couple of minutes. I'm just making a few modifications here and there to be able to hit these wonderful zip nodes that the creators surely have implemented for the ease of the speedrun. I'm convinced. So. Uh, that's not the way I usually go. What? Hey, let's go. Uh, zip node? Yes. And to the left. And to the right. Now here, a tiny bit of uh, placement, if I can get it to work. It's two steps in, but we take one step in, go down a little, so that we can save it quick later. And to the right. And those of you who are thinking ahead know what's coming up. The dreaded fireplace. I say dreaded just because in the speedruns this is the uh, thing that will uh, break everything. But let's try anyway. Um, now, I didn't put a lot of theory crafting into this for the piano. Uh, so essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to matrix print, matrix.print the fire code, fireplace code, except I'm going left to right and right and left. Um, also, I can't read chat uh, if there's any questions. Uh, someone else will have to tell me later. Uh, I mean, you'll be seeing uh, me in more runs in a couple of minutes. And then you'll see a couple of other uh, aspects of this game. Uh, da, 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 da. No. <laughs> no, no, I totally did not just forget the fireplace code. No. Um. Also, if you'd like to try this at home, feel free to do so. All you need is a keyboard or e-piano that has a MIDI out. I'm happy to give you the... Uh, oh, that's the wrong way, sir. Uh, to give you the program you'd need, because that is a free version of that will suffice. Left, maybe hit the button, that would be nice. Maybe go up a little. And to the right. Great, I can't see the cursor anymore. Uh, uh, da, da, da. Oops, come on. No, come on. There we go. And all the way to the left. The good thing is, during those loading uh, screens, you can just move the cursor. I might be a bit too far up. Let's see if that still works. Yeah, that is wonderful. Uh, let's try to hand ages the page, shall we? Uh, down. Ooh, ooh, maybe a tiny bit to the right? I did bring the page ages. There we go. 617. That's good. I'm happy with that. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, thanks, uh, everyone. I uh, hope you enjoy the, uh, this part of the run uh, of the block and the other parts as well. I will see you there.
Hello, racers. Are we ready to go? I am ready. So good. Hello. Hello. Why do I hear everyone twice? Because I have everything on here. One second. Good job. Uh, okay. Very good. I'm not running, by the way. I'm couch. Hello. Uh, okay. Should be fine now. <laughs> All right, I uh, will start the countdown then. If uh, wait, 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 wait. So, sorry, sorry, yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry. Okay, no, don't take uh, your time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <Shoot>. <laughs> okay. 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 I didn't have the bingo card open. All right. Um, okay. Right. All right. I'm ready. All right. It, was the concept explained of bingo? Is that my job? Hello. I guess. So. I guess. We're doing, we're streaming. Oh, fantastic. Hi, my name is Gelly, and I will be leading you through the charge that is a bingo run. Bingo runs traditionally have a five by five with 25 different little things that you work through in the duration of a game. Uh, for example, for this missed bingo card, uh, there's a variety of things that I'll explain. I don't know if they can see the bingo card yet or not, if they're cheating. Not yet. Uh, but the idea is whoever can get the first line of five, whether it's diagonals or anti diagonals or columns or rows. Uh, they win. And uh, that's pretty much it. Basically, you get the bingo card at the start of the run, and you try to figure out a route from there. So uh, now that that's settled, if everyone's ready to go, I'll start a countdown. Yep. Hang on one sec, guys. Oh. Uh, there's a problem with the Twitch. Uh, it's The pinned screen is not showing up as pinned on Twitch, and I'm not sure why. OK. Uh, am I, uh, which one is uh, pinned currently? Uh, Odo's screen with the Should correct be, right? stuff, but then it's just showing up our names on Twitch. Oh, come on, Zoom. Why? That's fine. We can just settle back and talk about the mystery that is the river water. Okay. Sorry. Take Sorry. No, I, I won't. No missed cannon here. Can they see? No, they cannot see the bingo card yet. Um, no, it, it tells us when we, uh, when we reveal. So. Right. I have it revealed because I'm not running. Which makes sense. Oh, come on. Wait. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. I think we're good. Okay. Fantastic. All right. I am going to mute and uh, pop back into my game. Oh, do we mute here? Yeah. Racers usually yeah. mute. Okay. I, Cause I mean, this is pretty casual. It's, I think it's up to you guys. Okay, I'll mute then. Uh, right, I'm ready. Okay. okay. Um, I will start the countdown. So everybody get your bingo cards out and ready in five, four, three, two, one, go. All right. So looking at the various uh, locations on a bingo card, I know the traditional strategy is that you usually want the middle square because the middle square gives you the most options. You get the vertical, the horizontal, and both diagonals as an option. Uh, open Selenitic is kind of rough, though, um, at least in my personal experience as someone who runs Myst. Uh, opening Selenitic is not my idea of a fun time. So uh, I would possibly avoid that. It depends. So already we have... Um, Ooh, who's green? Flapjack. Flapjack has already opened Stone Ship, so uh, he might go for open Selenitic, enable Magma Audio. Magma Audio is in Selenitic. The rotational demo is in Stone Ship, and collect Channel Wood Blue Page. You usually would want to avoid Channel Wood because there's so much that you have to invest in order to also get out of Channel Wood. However, it may be possible that the strategy he's going to opt to take is pop in and out of Selenitic, then Stone Ship, and then get into Channel Wood, get the Blue Page, and then be done with it. Uh, it sort of is up to him. Um, we're already seeing that Shox is unlocking Selenitic here, so he is taking the the middle one. And this is the reason why I wouldn't do Selenitic is because um, <laughs> figuring out the, the music is sort of odd. Why is he not skipping that cutscene? I don't remember if Original Mist lets you skip that cutscene or not. I guess it didn't because it took him a while. But anyways, now that they're both in Selenitic, we're, we're going to see... Um, 
or strategies that they might have. It might be that they both are taking the main diagonal here, which is up left to uh, bottom right. Uh, it just might be that Shox has opted to open the stone ship for later. It sort of depends. Uh, Flapjack is and Shox are both picking up the blue pages from Selenitic. Uh, okay, so Flapjack is opting for row four, which is turn on tunnel light, collect Selenitic blue page, view Cirrus's dagger, uh, open the stone ship, and read the organ solution. Uh, reading the organ solution is rather simple, so I could totally see that being a thing. Uh, Cirrus's dagger, I don't remember which one that's in. That might require going into less ages for all and more. Yeah, turn on, so he's turned on the tunnel light. He's also collected Selenitic's blue page. Okay. So looking at the bingo card here, just because it says collect it does not mean necessarily just picking it up. It also means putting it into the book. So that that strategy that I had concerning going to Channel Wood and putting it in the book would not work because you would have to return. Uh, so Shox has taken row four, column one as well. Uh, usually in these bingo things, you might not want to reveal your intent or you want to get as much on the board as possible. For example, there's blackouts that you can do where you do all 25, whoever can do all 25 first or whatever. But it also gives him a little bit of freedom uh, in case he wants to pick an alternate strategy. Flapjack has opted to, he just knows exactly what he wants here. So he's just got to view Cirrus's dagger, which is going to take him to is that stone ship. It's been a while since I've seen the Easter eggs in this game, but it sort of depends. Shock's making his way out of Selenitic here. Uh, the interesting thing about uh, the Maze Runner is that it's a much tighter sort of arrangement than it used to be in the past where you had to wait four minutes through all the cutscenes and stuff. Now that we have the ability to do cutscene skips, which was added in like 2016, 2017, it's very much a click, skip, click, skip, click, skip, and it's it's a lot tighter. So leaving Selenitic isn't as much of a, a bugbear as it used to be. So leaving Selenitic isn't as, as much of a problem as you'd think. Uh, so we have Shox has also collected uh, Selenetic's blue page. It might be that they've both gone through the row four and Shox picked up open Selenetic either to throw Flapjack off or to just say, yeah, I opened Selenetic. Uh, it might be mind games. Who knows? Uh, so the last thing that they have to do is view Sirius's dagger, which I'm assuming is in mechanical uh, because there would be no other reason why Flapjack wouldn't be going for it unless he's going for an alternate solution. Did I forget something about bingo? I may have forgotten something about bingo. Oh, because there would be no reason for him to be unlocking both channel wood and mechanical because he only has the one location left to do. Uh, is it possible that they're going for two lines? Is it single line? Let me check Discord real quick, y'all. Uh, is it two lines or one line? Because there's a lot of different varieties in, in how bingo can be played. Um, the way that I know best is that you go for the single line, but I know some people go for two lines, which allows you to come up with the intrigue of what the uh, intersections between the two solutions should be and whether investing the time in the bed is relevant or not. Um, uh, it might be that they're... So there's also another sort of uh, bingo called uh, lockout bingo, which is not what's going on here, but it's also sort of interesting. I'd like to see how that would pan out on a board like this, where once you get the solution, the other pe person cannot and whoever gets either the most squares or a bingo wins. Uh, I'd like to see that. I should probably ask these guys if they'd want to do a lockout bingo or if they had, whether that becomes cutthroat, too cutthroat to be, to be fun. All right. So the, all right. The Sears dagger is in channel wood, but why would Flapjack have unlocked mechanical? Was he just waiting to do so? Okay. So he's viewed this, the dagger and now he has line and that should be it for flapjack uh, meanwhile shocks is also making his way over i have some questions which we're going to get answered because <laughs> i, I want to ask him why he would ever unlock mechanical we'll see real quick because he is hi taking the victory competitor Hello. retires <laughs> <laughs> gg uh -huh. You, there's there's nothing to do while the t tree is raising. Oh, so I just wasted time by opening mechanical. Right. You can okay. stop the timer. Yep, you can stop the timer. We're we're done with bingo. We allocated uh, twenty minutes, but as it turns out, this we is can a do quite another round of oh, yeah, we can do more than one of these. Oh, sure, absolutely. Yeah, we, we yeah, feel we, free to do another. During during the practices, we usually did like two regular runs and one lockout or or one co-op run or something, um, whichever you like. 
It's up to up to the moderators. We will oh. defer to the people, whatever they want to see. What are the people? What are the people right. saying? All right, we're getting do a lockout in the comments. Oh, do, do a lockout. lockout. Okay. All right. All right. Fantastic. So yeah, uh, Dark Shock is going to generate I'm a new card. Uh, wait, can I set this up here? Yeah, just know. click yep. on room settings. One second, one second. No, 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 no. Game missed. Variant lockout. This is the most interesting part of Bingo, where people can't figure out the site. Load lockout. There we go. Right. White card and she'll generate card. I'm sorry. All right. Does everyone have a new card? I do have a new card. I do. I will click. All right. Um, can the mod uh, open it to to verify that there is no double cellulitic? Uh, no double selenitic. There's a bug double in the current blue. card where selenitic is on the is in the goals list twice. So, okay, selenitic so blue page only, is that what it is? There are not two open selenitics. No, okay. oh, a selenitic um, blue. Selenitic like blue. Selenitic page. blue. blue. Um, as far as I can tell, oh, there's there's two. No wait, I'm mixing up selenitic and stone. I, I only see the this one. Looks good. Okay, okay good. Okay, this nice. looks good. All right. Okay. <laughs> Um, I'm just going to mute myself. Oh, no, I wait. Yeah, yep. I'm going to mute myself. I will quick. mute myself as well. All right. Um, I will start the countdown. Anon. Fancy word. Not really. Sorry. Uh, time starts in five, four, three, two, one, go. The strategy for, for a, a lockout run is a lot more thinking about the other person than trying to do your own goals. Uh, depending on knowing whether you're better than the other person at a certain skill, you may race for certain objectives to beat them out to it, or you may opt to know that a certain solution is more optimal than another one and choose to pick a less optimal solution just to get out of the way or to pick up a square later. So for example, uh, Red, who is Dark Shocks, he's already picked up Organ Solution and Flapjack also went for it, just barely not making it. So that sort of gives him a bit of a time deficit because he has nothing to gain for the time that he invested there. So uh, now Shox is reading what he can to figure out which of the four that he's got an option for, whereas Flapjack is now scrambling to try to figure out a, a better uh, way to do this. So he's playing the organ solution itself. What is he playing? Hold on. Play the organ code. Yeah, so that's column four, row three. Uh, meanwhile, Shox is unlocking channel wood here. So now uh, Shox doesn't have the option of taking the row there, so he can either do the two diagonals, the column, or he could try to pick something else, uh, just knowing that the middle solution uh, blocking out flapjacks could also be uh, interesting. So we've got flapjack unlocking stone ship over here uh, and opening selenitic. That happened as well. Yes. Good eye me. Hold on. Really? Open selenitic. Oh, uh oh, that is incorrect. <laughs> He clicked the open selenitic one. He opened stone ship. Uh, someone needs to talk to this boy. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> open mechanical. He did just open mechanical. Uh, Shox just entered in the snakes constellation there, which we just saw. So he marked that down. So it looks like that he's aiming for, for that over there. This both blocks Flapjack out of really another option that he had, since they're both in the same column, and also aims for his own goal. And now he's unlocked open Solidity. Thanks, my dude. Um, so he could be going for column four here, which would be interesting, because now they're both going to be aiming for collect channel with red page. However, Flapjack is... Oh, wait, they can hear me. Should I be saying this? Nah, screw it. I'm saying this. So Flapjack is going into Selenitic, so he's not going to have the option to take column four, row four, uh, whereas Dark Shocks is going into Mechanical. So both of them are like, all right, whatever, we're going to handle the column four, row four battle later, or maybe not at all. Um, I think, yeah, Shocks is going to be taking column one, row one, so he's going all in on the diagonal. Meanwhile, Flapjack is picking up uh, one of the Selenitic pages, Selenitic blue page. No, Selenitic red page. That is the color red. So he's taking column one, row three. Why would he do that? What are these mind games? I can't figure that out. That's actually wild because these are the four most disparate, not lined up. Like they're each individually together are not collinear to form a solution, right? Except for play organ code, collect selenitic red page, except for the column, which has been mentioned. But there's no reason that he should be collecting the selenitic red page unless he's looking for, oh, maybe I'm missing one of these 
one of these here. Uh, so yeah, Shax has viewed the decapitated head mechanical and collected the mechanical blue page. And uh, Flapjack has collected the red page, but he hasn't marked it. Is there a reason? I'm trying to look at, to see if there's something about red pages that I missed. Perhaps not. So now Shox is beelining for, for channel wood over here. Um, Flapjack is turning off the lights in the observatory. Is he just going for the play where he gets as many as possible? I, so there's, there's two rules that I know that are possible for lockout. It's either get as many squares as possible or it's to get a bingo first. Uh, I don't know which one this is playing as. I would assume that it'd be the bingo because I think Shox is going for the bingo, but I could be wrong. Um, I've got pings. Oh, wait. Flapjack, you need to mark off Channel Wood Red if you. He has not collected Channel Wood. No, I haven't done it. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> Shock's so surprised that he's going to get this one potentially. We'll see. Um, although, yeah, it, it depends. I think it might be just a bingo sol solution here where, where Shox is just going to be gunning for the Channel Wood Red page. And Flapjack is trying to find if there's another bingo that he can get. Um, I'm looking at it. See, the thing with the diagonal that's super interesting is that it leaves no room for any other solutions, right? Unlike a column or a row where you could do another column or another row, doing a diagonal necessarily means that you cannot pick up any other columns or rows or the anti-diagonal. So uh, interestingly, whether or not this is optimal, I don't know, but it's definitely the way that sort of left uh, Flapjack in, a, in an interesting situation. Uh, we'll have to see. Just a, a matter of waiting now. Yep, open audio console door. Okay, so he's uh, done that for, for Selenitic. So maybe someone should tell him that it's not all diagonals because you can't just do, you know, column two, row five up to row two, column five. That doesn't work. Hmm. Maybe he knows something that I don't know. Maybe he's doing like postage stamp, but he's also including a couple other squares to give himself a little bit of leeway, you know? Postage stamp was a thing, right? The upper four corners of a bingo square. I don't know if that was just a thing that was like a regional thing, but I know that like, as like a joke, you'd say, oh yeah, that's also a bingo, even though it's only four squares. Uh, pretty sure that's not the case though. I'm pretty sure it's just rows, columns, and diagonal and anti-diagonal. Only the main ones. Can't pick up the small ones. He's looking at that fireplace. Shox is look. No, Flapjack was looking at that fireplace. What are you doing, man? He's a hamster in a cage. He's trying to figure out where to go. <laughs> uh, Shox, by the way, the reason that he's pausing, it's super funny. So he's actually not unlocked the water correctly. And so he was pausing because he was expecting to skip the channel wood elevator riding cutscene. Uh, unfortunately, because he didn't have it unlocked, it's just a pause, right? Uh, in Scum VM, the version that has been used for, for Myst, um, pausing and cutscene skip are the exact same key. So when he's pausing a bunch of times in a row, it's because he's missed it. So yeah, Flapjack is looking at the, the uh, the who's a what's it? The the rotatey thing, the worst thing in Mist. Not because it's bad from like a from a speedrunning perspective, it's awful. Because if you look at it, did it I miss something? Sort of focuses you there. What? Did I miss something? GGs. No, you got yeah. It was GGs. Oh. Uh, Flapjack oh, okay. didn't have a way in because you no, were. In I didn't. Oh, he didn't have a way in. No, because <gasps> think think about it. With the diagonal, you can't oh, do any of rows. Course. Can't do any columns, which is super funny. So wow. GG skis. So I locked you out. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and locked out. It was not intentional. I just went for that diagonal. <laughs> it's a good strategy. Uh, yeah, that's what, yeah. <laughs> this is, by the way, just for context, this is the very first round I win against Flapjack. <laughs> oh, really? Congrats. Yes. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Oh, uh, all right. Cool. We have a little bit of time. I don't know if you wanted to try to do one more thing. Don't we? we could do one more. If we have 20 time, minutes we on the schedule. Okay. So co-op. I'm gonna let them Oh, talk. you want to do a clear the card? Yeah. Well, oh, clear the card. Okay, wait, because that might be too much. That's usually that's... faster, right? If we have if we have it, enough. It's it's a, it's yeah, it's a co-op routing exercise. 
You think which means in this like... case we'd both stay in the voice channel. Yep, we sure. have to. All right, the people have uh, spoken. A couple uh, of people I'll have, have to spoken. flip to uh, so, your color as well. To uh, explain, yeah. the way co-op, this fill out card is working is that they're both trying to fill out the 25 squares as fast as possible, but either one of them can get a square. So they're working together now. Uh, yep. So they have an average of like 12 and a half, but depending on the routing, someone might have a faster time with 15 of them than the other has with five. All right. Shall we, yeah. shall we divvy up, um, divvy it up? Uh, I'll take channel wood and stone ship and you take mechanical and selenitic. Sounds good. Who does the first um, main island preparation stuff? Uh, I'm just going to unlock stone ship and then dive right into channel wood. And then I'll let you take mist island. If you be, uh, save Miss island for last. Save Miss Island for last. Okay, sounds good. All right, then I'll start with. Right, so I have uh, Selenid again, mechanical, right? Yep. So yeah, whichever you prefer to unlock first. Yep. Sounds good. All right, I'm ready. All right, time starts in five, four, three, two, one, go. And thus the time starts. So I'm pretty sure they're going to be talking. So yeah, we have. Yeah, to. yeah you can talk. <laughs> All right, I see um, Channel Web Blue page, so I've got to go for it. Nice. So not a waste of time. Stone ships open. It's a shame. Uh, by the way, second recording. I've got to go to his room. No rhyme squares. Unfortunate. Ha! Jesus, saw that just... rhyme squares? <laughs> yeah, where's rhyme? Rhyme's like the best oh. part of myth. Oh, God. It was so good they had to add it later. I'm sorry. <laughs> you ought to be, you actually ought to be ashamed of yourself. Uh, let's see. Swords and Dragonfly, oh, good God. To Lighthouse, all... Correct Fireplace, good. Sorry, I'm reading. Trap Chest. Okay. Selenitic statue is in um, mechanical. Ah, uh, uh, yes. Mechanical. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah. Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. What do we need to do here? Selenitic blue page. Nah. Selenitic blue All right. So I shouldn't have to visit twice. I only have one page. So one Jesus. visit and I'm out. Us. So much fun to maneuver. Oh, is Bob on here? I didn't even think of it. No, please no. Bob I don't see Bob. On. Well, then I'll do Bob last. If, if no, he's not on there. I don't see Bob. He's not there's, on there. There's oh, no thank Bob. Goodness. Right. Anything else? Backtrack. Second recording. Desk toy. Where's Sirius desk toy? Uh, that's gonna be. Uh oh, that was is close. That uh, it in... should be in um, Stone Ship. Should it not? Okay. Yeah. The yeah. Sounds orb good. on the. Post. Oh, oh, the 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 sphere thingy. Mm -hmm. Trigger the trap All right. chest. Channelwood Blue, that. trap chest, and his second recording. For the audience, Bob is a skeleton that is possible to look at through the telescope by rotating Mechanical Island. It's this is hefty wind. to get to. Wind. His name is Bob. I don't know why. Channelwood Blue, Maybe wind, wind audio. Yeah, yeah so he's got three so far. Stone Ship Red, Charlie Judge, Generator. Uh, Black Ship Insignia is Stone Ship, right? Uh, it should be in the library. Oh, what okay. is the trap chest? Uh, in Channel Wood on the, oh, the thing that goes click. It goes <laughs> kachunk? Yeah, okay. All right. Akinaz, no to Cirrus. Where's the. Oh, skeleton became no. Oh, that's in Mechanical. That's me. Oh. Okay. I think that's everything here. I hope I didn't miss anything. Selenitic um, statue is the picture, is the wait, maze runner that's in mechanical. that is located in mechanical uh, it's second in where is it the cirrus throne there it I is think. it's a little rocket ship you can actually see it it's cool it's the closest you ever want to get to rand miller's lips right there <laughs> uh <laughs> shoot that's the closest you'd ever want to get to rand miller right, right. right. me personally you know others wow. may, may, may differ but you know this is a strong thing to say at mysterium where <laughs> <laughs> Rand Miller is a lovely man, but you know, I have, you know, <laughs> you have your boundaries. So this is, yeah, fair. I have, I have limits. 
Uh oh, I got turned around there. There we go. It's this one. No, it's not this Red one. Trick. It's In this Maze one. Runner. That's a super funny one because, um, I mean, who would backtrack from the Maze Runner? It's impossible to not get there first. All time. right. That should be that. Akinar's not to, okay. All right. That should be the Channelwood Blue page. Uh, hang on. Isn't this? Didn't we? There we go. So it's right. Definitely. Organ uh, solution. Judge call Tony, hologram. Stone ship. Someone's going to want to pick up a bunch of the library things, such as turning library. Yeah. Library uh, the tower rotation. Nope, nope, nope. I misclicked. Reading Where is organ it? solution. Synodic statue. Mechanical, mechanical, mechanical. Oh. Is, Jack, is Cobra Jack in the box mechanical? Uh, uh, yes. Wasn't there a mechanical page? No, there was not a mechanical page. There was not a mechanical page. Okay, okay, okay. No. Serious no Note to is in mechanical, right? Stone ship red. Uh, I need you. Whoop. Come here. There. Whoop. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, skull hologram. There we go. Akinos yeah. Note to Cirrus. Whatever. Um, Your greed's sick. Says Akinos. Tower rotation hint. Red library page. I think that's it from from mechanical. I'm not sure though. Is Cobra Jack a joke? Someone uh -oh. Said Cobra Jack oh, the Cobra the is that here? Someone said it's somewhere there. It's in mechanical. Thank you. It's mechanical. I didn't see yeah. it on the card. Thank you. To uh, Insignia Blitz. Black Ship. That's the other thing that's in mechanical, isn't it? Or is that in the book? I, I thought it's the, the the piece of cloth in 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 Stone Ship. There actually. we go. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's where the is it. The uh, Flapjack Black said Ship? it's in the library. Yeah, the black ship insignia is in the book for uh, mechanical in the library. Bottom okay. shelf all the way on the left. This is unfortunate because it's going to require lore. Bottom so. shelf? Yeah, the bottom shelf of the Mist library. It's the book on the, the left. Oh, oh, oh. oh. All right. I'm only really charged I'm just... generator. <laughs> I'm just going to do island stuff. View Cirrus's dagger. No. That's in uh, Channelwood. Channelwood. That's all right, in Channel I have to go yeah. back. On the left, we have, have to, go to go back, back to the island. Yeah. Oh, that's the insignia. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Because right. it's like full. Oh, there, Shox is carrying us. I've got to go back to Channelwood. Shox, you got to look at the okay. correct fireplace code as well. Uh, uh, right, uh, right. Thanks. Um, red library page. Cirrus. Um. Uh, um. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh no. And uh, which number is it? One fifty. One fifty-eight. One fifty. Thank you. <laughs> Very good. Um, you're also going to probably want to pick up the tower rotation hints, which is um, Selenetic yeah, and yeah. Mechanical. Yeah, yeah. Two. The, the, tea, the, 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 the things. One is here. He's thought one eventually. Is... Yeah. Uh, I should <laughs> have done that in a screen. different order, but it doesn't matter. Come on, where are the zips? Where is my zips? Okay, whatever. Um, rotate. You want to look at the snake constellation while you're there? Ah. I forgot. No. So the problem with stone ship is you have to be very careful to not drag the telescope. If you click outside the viewport in the telescope, it Oh my god, Flapjack, slow down. There it's we 135. Go. <laughs> I swear it's not my fault. I saw you click off. It was your fault. Okay. Tower rotation and tower rotation and um Correct fireplace. Or you have to actually go up, you have to go up the tower. Organ solution. Yeah, organ solution and snake constellation. Sirius's desk toy. That's going to be flapjack eventually, if he hasn't done it yet. No, Sirius's desk. Wasn't it Stoneship? The little sphere thing. You're right. It is. My bad. Yeah. Uh, um, what was it? And then Stone Ship Red Page. So snake someone has to go back to Channelwood, and someone has oh, no, to go no, no, back no. to Stone Ship. Yeah. Uh, take over Stone Ship. I gotta go to Channelwood. All right, I'll do stone ship. Let me just view the snake constellation. Which is what? January 8th, 3, 546 AM. Wait, what? Snake is January 8th. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. Don't worry. I've got it. I've got it written down here, but thanks. For people uh, who are confused, by the way, because this is the funniest thing to explain. You discovered uh, this. I discovered that the uh way that the constellations work are modular and so certain years can be like flipped back and certain dates can be flipped back. The 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 time has to be the same, 
but by using various formulas in the code, you could figure out that there's an optimal solution, January 8th, year three, that also gives the snake constellation. We figured it out for all the other constellations, so. All right, so I'm going to stone ship, correct? Did you do the organ solution? Oh. You had to read That's it. That's what I was you don't looking have to for. play it. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, freak. All right, I'm on my way back. There we go, got okay. the organ solution. Uh, now, I got to raise the stone ship first. Uh, da, 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 da. There we go. Uh, read the organ solution. I think time will be <laughs> you might, when no, Shox no. plays with right. toy. I'll, 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 I'll get it. I'll race you to race you to the desk toy. <laughs> I don't think he actually viewed the correct fireplace code, but he was going by tens. No, he was. I didn't by, go by tens. You, you went by ones. How do you go by tens in the book? I don't remember. Yeah, that was something that was discussed, like uh, in the in the in the very first when 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 um, I was about to say when Akana played it. No, when um, shit. Well, sh for, sorry, very sorry. <laughs> it's uh, fine. Keep going. Where's our got it? There we uh, go. Time. Have right. you got it? Oh god, I did get it. I made it back. There. <laughs> uh, I was pretty sure you got you were gonna get that fast. Cl click me. hold. Interesting. I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah, if you hold it down, it it'll it'll eventually go by attention, dance. Obviously, that's cool. Um, all right that was fun well, that's it for bingo uh hope y'all enjoyed uh bingo is a, an interesting add-on that we've put on the mist it hasn't been explored quite as much but mostly because people haven't been hanging around to do it, bingo so it's, it's perhaps free. We can... it's free for anyone to play <laughs> it's free as long as you have missed yes yep or riven also, also feel riven free on. to join us on the discord and maybe speed run this uh with us yeah it'd be a blast Nine minutes fifty. I think that might be our PB, but I can't remember. I think we had one. It would have been a lot a faster nine. if I hadn't had to double dip into both Channelwood and Stone Ship. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I th I think I had like very few. <laughs> All right. All right. So, okay. yep. We'll be pivoting to the next one. <laughs> yep. yep. Give me a second. Not, I need to get up. It's your turn. <laughs> yeah. Yep. My, and your, my... your your screen is um your, your standard <laughs> screen. He, he, screen he is, got is he on. got caught short. <laughs> I forgot that I uh <laughs> who nilly. All right. Oh boy. Uh so to explain what's going on here, if there's any cohesion to this, we've noticed that the real mist masterpiece edition and mist runs have approximately equal any percent times between uh, if 40 and 50 good. seconds between 40 and 50 seconds um so as a joke <laughs> which is a lot less funny when you have to do it uh, <laughs> we're gonna race me with real mist masterpiece edition against shocks who's going to be doing uh regular old mist uh, the thing is that the timing is actually different between us for the categories right. due right. to historical reasons, which I'm never really sure of. But I get to start on the island. It gives right. me a little bit of a time right. advantage. I'm going to need it. He, uh, he gets to start uh, on first input. The, the, basic, the basic essence of how we do our timings usually is first input to final input. And for both mm -hmm. games, that's something slightly different. Mm -hmm. And so. activating zip mode does not count as an input. No, it does not. It does not count <laughs> as start of the game. But interestingly, uh, you uh, for some games, zip mode has to be activated after you start the game. So you, there is some baked in time loss to certain versions of Mist, but not on the PC version. Um, do we have enough? I don't know how we are time plan wise. Should we make this best of three if we have enough time? We can try. Uh, you might find out quickly that it'll be a three now in your no, favor. No, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Um, I, All I right. Did some Someone practice, to count so. us down? I will count you down. All right. And five, four, three, two, one, go. Significant delay for shocks, but we'll just let it ride.
Whoops. Time. That was so close. <laughs> it was you actually really close. What's going on. Uh, Shocks <laughs> that was gave not you close the, at all. <laughs> uh, I'd, I'd say it was pretty close. Shocks gave you the error you needed. Oh, yep, okay. I, I turned. I didn't find the zip to the library and oh. went to the planetarium. planetarium Thankfully, instead. he didn't open the planetarium door, though. Yeah, that that's, that's horrible. <laughs> all right. I so, say do another. That was so fast. Yeah. Let's do. Let's do one I, more. I was trying to focus on actually playing the game. I feel like I should explain real <laughs> Myst Masterpiece Editions speedrun because for Myst, it's sort of obvious, if not it's actually intended route. accelerated. Yeah. Um, uh, there's some small things like the zips and the corner cut, the, the kitty corner cut to uh, uh, the power. But I feel like I have a lot of tech that I have to explain. And I so I'm, I'm going to try to yeah, do Yeah, go that. for it. And, and then they can watch it one more time. Yeah, and we'll, we'll have one more. Effort. So I, 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 do I have a, a point on my side? Well, if you do best of three, then we'll still do. Yeah, you do have a point. Three. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, you've got okay. A point. Wow. That's... Don't blow it. No, no <laughs> too late. <laughs> Don't too late. screw up everything. Dead. So there's, there's, two, there's two main things at play. There's two main glitches at play with Real Miss Masterpiece Edition. Uh, the first of which is... Um, exchanging a library page through the marker switch on the dock. Uh, for whatever reason, holding a, a page, you can literally just reach through the door of the marker switch and grab the white page without having to open it. That's mm -hmm. that's the first time save. And the second time save is called saging. Which uh, I'm going to explain at the time because I think it makes more sense yeah. to see it happen. All right. Um, I will all count right, you. I'm ready. I'll count, yeah, I'll count you down again. Three, all right. two, one go so another thing that you'll notice is that i'm actually walking with a strafe as well that means that i go 1.4 times faster than standard speed which is actually extremely important it's not just holding a library page but having held a library page at any point allows you to actually grab the page through the door here like you've seen uh, i'm continuing strafing to make it as fast as possible into the fireplace over here and as i solve this fireplace over here i'm going to explain what a sage is it's combining oh, no. age with a save uh you load a save not, while you're transitioning not. into an age and it loads the position of the save into the age that you're transitioning into. So I'm making the save while I'm rotating here. I'm gonna pop myself into Kavir and then I'm gonna load this and it actually pops me straight above Atrus's table. I'm gonna switch to classic and the closest position is right next to the table here. I turn and I pop on the page. <sighs> so close. Is that I had the point so zip forgot zip turned on. I did the new Oh my new gosh. <laughs> That's oh my god! That's why I screamed mid. mid oh. I, I knew it had to be something more than just clicking on the door. That was a pretty bad. That was a That's pretty bad silly. show. Oh wow. god! Yeah, I definitely want that third run, please. You, you have one more chance. Yeah, not um, the tiebreaker, but you know the redemption no. round. <laughs> One more fun fact: I have to actually close the game in the interim because there's no way to stop the cutscene at the end. Yeah. Um, I'm not dunking on anybody. It's just a design decision that speedrunners hate. So. Not only not enough. only that, but for for the rule the rules of play actually state that for um, some runs you have to clear your save files as well. So I forget which categories you require that. <laughs> that is a funny glitch. Okay, all right. So. <laughs> all right, go ahead and uh, load back to your new game, sir. Mm -hmm. I have to do the whole thing. Am I laggy on my end? It's no, actually, if anything, it's Dark Shocks' stream that's slightly behind, but since you're both calling time, then it doesn't actually matter. Okay. One, more time. All right. Here we go. Counting down five, four, three, check your zip mode, two, one, go. Yeah. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> he did check his zip mode, actually. <laughs> oh, that's super good. That's super good. All right. So you can see, again, Darkshock's following the intended route, no! uh, the uh, <laughs> what you maybe consider to be the nominal route. And then uh, Gelly simply using the trick of exchanging the page through the marker switch and then using the Sage to 
cut down on load times and land himself closer to Atrus when he actually loads into Kavir. <laughs> I'm so sorry for the audio. Um, <laughs> I messed up my OBS. Someone has time. Um, I have sub notifications on my OBS and I thought I removed them. I'm so sorry. Stop. Is someone oh, sub in the middle of your run? Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> oh no well that that is that is that is best of three and you got all, all right. three Gelly, you were I, right three, three nil. nil wow <laughs> <laughs> all right it is oh, interesting to see the two the two games side by side like this i end up in the fireplace earlier by about three seconds um when i compared against shox's run the time made up is literally skipping all, the, yeah. the fireplace rotation that's it that's it's huge. So, and also yeah. the fireplace is kind of wonky in this version. So, okay. Any who's a what's it? Well, I think we're on to the next thing, which is iOS all pages. I think. Yep. Should be. Indeed, it is. All nice. Right. All right. Hello. Hello, sir. How are you? <laughs> Pretty good. I've been sitting here just sweating bullets <laughs> you'll be everyone here in the miss community is always super friendly so go ahead and uh introduce yourself and uh we'll kick it off sure uh hi everyone i'm radicoon you can also call me jordan um i played miss Riven in exile as a kid i started a little youtube series for the 25th anniversary and then just played revelation like a couple months ago currently working through uru and five um I saw this crew speedrun uh, the first three games at GDQ and referenced some of their works in my videos. And when I finished Revelation, I decided to give it a, a shot um, and then got a pretty good time on the leaderboard. And once I realized there were like wacky categories like the PlayStation, the Nintendo DS and iOS for some of the other mainline games, I kind of dove into those. And I guess here I am on, on the virtual stage. <laughs> so this is my first Mysterium and my first speedrun like demonstrated to anyone. So uh, the nerves are there, but but I'm sure we'll have a good time. Yeah. We'll and on my fine. couch is the guy you've been listening to for a while now, Flapjack. Yeah. So hey God, we're having another pinning issue. Wow. Okay. Why we'll this tight. Zoom is really not cooperating today. That's okay. We'll sit tight. So right. to explain what's what's happening. So Radicoon actually joined and picked up uh, categories, which to date, no one else, no one submitted in any pages before you did. I don't think so. Uh, not on pages. iOS now. Yeah. yeah. So, and it, it actually is interesting because there are some features unique to the iOS run that um, just don't happen in the other versions of the game, including one you just found before before this, <laughs> this presentation. Yeah, literally today. So we'll so, see how that goes. Yeah, he told me about it prior to the event. I'm like, yes, show it off. <laughs> so, all right, you're all set. You're spotlighted, so it's not switching now. Cool. Right, okay, sir. one thing I do want to point out is this is actually the iPhone app. Um, we're just screen doubling it in like compatibility mode on an iPad because it turns out it's easier to tap when it's twice the size. So I guess give me a countdown. All right, counting down from five, four, three, two, one, go. I'm going to be mostly quiet, I think. Okay, so you can see that uh, we're basically following a very similar setup route to uh, what you would expect from the PC version of this game. Um, but you can see the very first thing he's just found, he was able to skip the, the, anim the sound uh, transition of uh, Stone Ship Rising simply by closing the app and reopening it, which is what he discovered earlier. Um, he is setting up channel wood. He can definitely do channel woods opening faster in iOS. You can spin the valve and it acts much faster. Uh, he's going from here to set up selenitic and he, he will, uh, have to, you can see most of the controls that he's using are touch interactive. Uh, one of the things that, um, he, uh, told me about when, uh, he was, uh, practicing is that, um, some of the transitions moving from place to place some are faster and some are slower so you might see him tapping what you would what would look to be rather mad oh bummer just that is actually, it. <laughs> it is very tight 
So you'll see him tapping rather quickly uh, to try and make things progress. And it is because, as of right now, our understanding is that some transitions are fast and some aren't. So it'll look like he's just trying to make the game go. But in reality, he doesn't know when he can expect to see a fast transition or a slow one. So nice. OK, so uh, heading into Channelwood, um, this part is very similar, but there is a, a twist on uh, this version, which you'll get to hear more than anything. So just like in the uh, PC run of all pages, we'll send the tree back up. But as you can hear, even though we're in Channelwood, nowhere near Mist Island, you could you could hear that the uh, Channelwood tree was actually still rising, and is continuing to rise. So by the time we make it back, it will be all the way at the top. So, yep, it's Channelwood tree still going up. We're not on mist, but you can hear it. So, uh, a, a twist uh, uh, because of this uh, wrinkle in the routing. What'll happen is is that uh, when he gets back, he has to release all the steam from the boiler and then uh, make it try and route in some other things so that when he goes back he will not be wasting as much time this is an unskippable cutscene compared to uh pc the door opening to the stairs down the tree so he will follow it down and reroute the water so he can use the second level elevator very much what we're used to seeing and then he will head up. Uh, one of the things is that uh, the inventory system is slightly different, again, to a PC version. The pages appear actually as part of the uh, overlay. You obviously have no cursor, the, the very iconic mist cursor. You don't have that here. So as you can see, when he picks a page up, it actually puts it in the lower left. And so it makes it such that uh, you don't have it kind of obstructing your view. And again, because there is no cursor per se, we actually have thought to look into to see if there is a cursor for iOS, but I don't. We suspect there isn't one, even though there is keyboard support for the iPad. So, so moving the valves so that we can access the footbridge. Another scene that we can skip. So these are we. Uh, Radical and I, as I said, just discovered this wrinkle of being able to close and open the app again to forcibly skip some cutscenes. So I believe we're still in the discovery phase of actually finding out which ones can be skipped and which ones can't. Uh, so we uh, are on our way out of Channelwood for the first time. Looking good. So as you would expect, just because Simply, there are some cutscenes which cannot be skipped. Uh, this version ends up being slightly longer, but in ways that some it would some things you can skip, others you can't, and it's not immediately apparent unless you play through it and are attempting to draw comparisons between the two versions that you start to notice um, some things that are just faster than others. This progresses slower than the PC version, but once again, we can skip it. Fast, much faster that time. <laughs> yeah, it's too fast. It yeah. doesn't actually save any time. <laughs> All right, so this is our second visit. So we've already collected the red page or onto the blue page. Uh, something which I did, neglected to mention, um, but uh, is relevant nonetheless, is that when you play this game, um, it uh, has a transition speed, which is settable on the home screen when you launch the game. Um, and the highest transition speed that you can pick is called zip. But it's rather misleading. There are no zips in this game, to our knowledge. You went looking for them. We haven't actually found that you can actually zip anywhere. Right, Not correct. like you would in the uh, PC version, so. So picking up the blue page. And then back out. Uh, let's see. I'm going to come up with uh, actually some of the notes that you sent me. I'm going to read them while we're waiting. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, luckily Attica. the return trip is uh, is much less stressful. Yeah. So let's see. Uh, some notes. We got this, this was an app released in 2009 for $6 for iOS 3. Holy moly. And now we're all the way on iOS. You're running on iOS 14. So as you, as Radicum pointed out, you, this is an iPhone app, but it's playable on iPad. Um, and yeah, we've stated that uh, some settings persist across new games. Uh, I don't think we've really been able to rhyme or reason it. We're just basically taking notes at this point to find out which ones persist and which don't and why I'm that is. I'm going to quiet for just a second. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Uh, the good old audio cues. Uh, interestingly on that, um, some games, uh, I think most most runners who play those games actually have, uh, will use a visual setup actually uh, combined with the audio setup. I know that that's what I prefer to do. I actually um, use the first, I set the first slider due to a, a visual cue and uh, then set the rest by, by ear by following the tone. But uh, I gave myself a visual setup. This is now. This is worth watching. This is really interesting. So you're going to see him start to complete the Maze Runner, but he's able to skip cutscenes. Some by using the green skip arrow, which seems to the right. But you'll see him just turning to the side because it unloads the animation of turning the Maze Runner. Uh, and by doing that, he's able to uh, speed up the Maze Runner itself. And not only that, he's also contending with a small window in which he, he can buffer an input before a noise plays. And he's doing it rather well. He's only missed one so far. So this it's this strange rhythmic dance of using the skip arrow in the corner, skipping by turning to the side, and also trying to nail a audio skip by being very precise. That was really well done. Ooh. <laughs> We get to do it again. Yeah, we get to do it one more time. So it's this strange dance of turning, skipping, and timing your inputs to execute Maze Runner as fast as possible on this version, which is utterly unique. No other version does this. So you'll see, and you've probably seen by now that some of these cutscenes are skippable due to a, a green arrow that appears in the upper right of the screen. But as we've as we've noted. Uh, he's able to skip others by closing and opening the app. And then in this case, for some, he's able to simply turn away from the playing movie, the playing FMV, and it will not be there when he comes back and it'll have finished. So here we go again. You can watch for yourself. Uh. <laughs> Sometimes so it gets tripped up on itself. Here you go. Yeah, see, it didn't turn that time for some reason. Let's go. Okay. And... There we go. Nice. It is quite. It is quite the rhythmic dance. I, I loved. I loved watching it the first time you showed it to me. It was really neat. All right, so we are done with Selenetic and yep, Stone Ship next. Again, since no zips, we're not able to skip the dock. We have to walk all the way down. Oh, this is a weird one. Oh yes, so there's an interesting problem. Well, problem bug. We're not really sure, but. If you turn away before the button has come back up, it, your view is forced snap. And then, so there's a couple of odd features here where your position is reset based on factors we're not 100% sure of. We think it has to do with the FMVs playing and, and finishing and basically reloading your position. But what we do know is that we can replicate one of them simply by the fact that if you press the button on the pump and then turn away before the button has come back up, you're forced to look at the button when it comes back up. So it turns you, it spins you back around. 
Would you like this button? Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, I love the zoom there. So, oh, and then okay, you can turn around a little bit. And then you can also see that as he was trying to enter the lighthouse to uh, to use the key on the chest, that he was warped to the bottom of a flooded lighthouse. So, a couple of uh, interesting features to uh, to note about uh, movement in stone ship. I believe this in this version, the generator stays charged for the second visit. All right. Uh, just a little bit. You, it's definitely like you cannot charge it enough, and I've had it be dark when I go back. So it's like it continues to expire, kind of like the channel wood tree. Yep. So you can see it again. He did turn briefly, but it, it spun him back around. So. All right, and then pumping out the captain's cabin. There we go. Ah, uh, come on. Some and one of the issues there is with with this kind of game, with playing the, through this kind of interface rather, is that you buffer your inputs because, as we've said, some transitions are fast and others aren't. So you're basically mashing to take advantage of whatever transition speed you've got, but. Some inputs just end up being buffered in, and therefore, Turkey, uh, you wind <laughs> up, you wind up accidentally clicking past where you want to go. Uh, this is a, a problem that is actually not unique to this version. If anyone uh, has ever seen the Nintendo DS run of this game, you run into a very similar thing where you're trying to take advantage of the maximum transition speed, which you can't exceed. You can't go faster than the transition speed will allow you, but. You know, it's speed run. You're desperate. You're trying to make it go as quick as you can. So, and you can end up going past where you meant to go. All right, blue page mechanical, and there's only one left after here. Well, one plus another, the final white page. So, and you can see just similar to the uh, PC version that as he's been entering and going past all the marker switches on Mist Island, that he's been setting them to the correct position so that we retrace our steps as little as possible. Woo, maybe the fortress rotation simulator is still a threat even in this version. So uh, you have to make sure that you accidentally do not accidentally click on it. You can see that the stairs stay down in this version as well, as opposed to the PC version, we have to lower them again. All right, and then we go to free Atris. My page. And this is one of the more satisfying fireplaces for no other reason than you can be rather precise and quick. Very nice. Almost real miss levels of uh, of entry there, and you can skip. And this, the best uh... part, the best part's coming up. <laughs> oh yeah, you simply walk up to him. That's the end of the game right there. And he's gone. And he's gone <laughs> because you unloaded the app. <laughs> and he's back. And if we unload the app one more time, he'll just have place missed in front of us. So. The same is true. There is no handing the page to him. You simply enter the cutscene and it plays out automatically. That's it. That is iOS all pages. Very well done. Thank you. Um, I call him Speed Rand because he uh, completed Sun Percent really quickly there. <laughs> Speed Rand. <laughs> you have to forgive my joke. Um, yeah, that's like it. it. Uh, so yeah, going from a Miss fan to a uh, being commented by GDQ speedrunner, uh, anyone can do it. I promise. There's a category out there for you. Yeah. Check the check the Discord. Check speedrun.com. There's plenty plenty of room for everyone. Thank yep. You. We're happy to have everyone. And I know that in particular, we would love to uh, as as we get closer to the release the release of the new Mist game in this year. That we'll be very happy to have the community come together and try and uh, optimize the new Mist the new missed game when it comes out. So for the, for, for those of us who don't have an Oculus quest, that is. <laughs> All righty. Thanks everyone. On to the next thing. I believe next up is going to be uh, Vince running the um, Apple II. Okay. There's Vince. 
replace spotlight. Okay, so loading it up here. So yeah, this is the uh, uh, Apple II version. I presented yesterday a little bit in the background at it if you're interested. Uh, I actually did a speed run of this before and it has the uh, you know, the record right now is three minutes 50. I was practicing a bit before this and I actually uh, averaged about four minutes, but I, I think I could beat the record here. The trouble is the fireplace. Uh, turns out the hitbox on the exit button is very small and um, you know, I, you can blame the author who's me, so blame myself. So, you know, if you hit that wrong, then you lose like 30 seconds and stuff. But uh, I'll try to see and make sure that, um, you know, I can uh, do that. So let's see. Uh, sorry if I don't make much commentary here. It turns out that, uh, you know, this all takes a bit, I learned yesterday, it took a lot more concentration to talk and, and do it at the same time. So we'll see. Uh, at least this time I've got it so it's not mirrored. Yesterday when I was running through things, my, my screen was flipped. So I was doing everything in mirror image, which was a little exciting. So, so uh, oops, let me set that. Okay, so let's get ready and go. Go here first. Got load from disk in different parts of it here, but thankfully it's fairly fast. Switch here. A lot of these things, I optimize them for casual playing. And so it's sort of annoying trying to do it during a speed run. Sideways here. And this is the exciting part here. I have to do the rapid disk switch. Uh, entire game does not fit in one disk. And so when I did it, I poorly made the decision that the cabin could go in the second disk because assumption you're going the channel would anyway, but it makes the speed run a little difficult. Actually, on the flip switch to the white page, I didn't actually realize it's actually possibly a bug compared to original game when I implemented it. Usually, I'm not, I've got them all flipped for the tower rotation, so I didn't realize that it, you had to flip it. So, I'm actually in a really good pace here, which means I'm probably going to mess it up here in the fireplace, but let's see. You'll notice the fireplace is a bit smaller than in the real game. Uh, just wouldn't fit. Let's see if I can hit this button right. No! <laughs> oh, that cost me. That would have been a record. Obviously, I should fix the game so that doesn't happen. Uh, 
time did I get that all right? I think so. There we go. And there we go. <laughs> so four minutes, that's, I guess, average. You know, it would have been better if I had messed up the door there. But uh, yeah, there's speed run for Apple too. I don't know, any questions or? If not, that's all for me this time. Setting up. It's my audio coming through. Test. Test one, two, three. Um. Hello. Okay, that's weird. I'm hearing myself from like two different places. I, I gotta mute the Twitch. Oh yeah, there's gonna be a delay with Twitch. You definitely don't yeah. want to be listening there. Yeah, you definitely want Twitch muted. Oh. Someone in chat <laughs> asked what bingo is. Zalsus, can you uh, recap? Sure. So I'll give a little explanation. I also Hi. had to change my speakers so I could hear y'all in here. Yeah. So um, I'm Zaustus. Uh, I'm muted here to watch the Twitch stream. And this is going to be a another bingo race, but this one's for Riven. This is going to be between Dark Shocks and Atagoat. Yeah, right. um, so bingo is basically, it's a bingo card, just like oh. your... Oh, yeah, with. I need to get my stream online. Atagoat, are you able to hear me? Sounds like he's not. Um, so they're going to be revealing a bingo card, and it will have various objectives in the game. And uh, they're going to race to see who can get a bingo faster. Uh, so that's uh, that's it, just what it sounds like. It's pretty straightforward. So, um, yeah, I'll be commentating on this one. Um, and whenever they're, it looks like they're still setting up the game. So uh, should be just a moment. Uh, the question in chat, is this one a lockout? Uh, I think we're going to start with just a basic bingo. That's my understanding. Yes, this one is not lockout. Not lockout. Yeah. Uh, I'm ready, and I'll unmute myself now. Uh, I'll mute myself now. There. You'll un unmute yourself. Okay, so Dark Shocks is ready. We're just waiting for word from Atagoat when he is ready. So um, this is a crowd where I don't really need to explain much about Riven, is it? <laughs> uh, I was lucky enough to get to play this game at AGDQ 2020. Uh, there had to explain what it was, but uh, everybody here knows exactly what Riven is. Uh, you know it, you love it. So yeah, uh, the main speed tech here in Riven, if you haven't seen a speed run of it before, is something called galloping. Um, the Scum VM implementation uh, of Riven that was released as part of the 25th anniversary um, package uh, has both uh, mouse input like traditional, but it also has keyboard input. So you can actually double up the mouse and keyboard frames, alternate them, uh, and uh, Theoretically, you can do that every single frame. Um, so the world record has been bumped down to Jaff by Jaffris down to 523. Um, 
just flying along. So it's it's pretty amazing to see. Uh, if you're not familiar All with right, the, I am ready to go whenever... Oh, oh, wait, I need to transition. That's... Wait, wait a second. Why isn't it showing that I transitioned? It would be really hard to uh, follow... If you didn't understand, if you didn't know the game already, I think Adago probably can't hear me talking, so he doesn't know he's talking over me. Shoot! If anybody was talking, I didn't hear you because I, my speaker somehow decided to set to my microphone, which is which they do that sometimes. They're dumb. Yeah. Can you hear can you me hear now? now? Yeah, I can hear you all now. Excellent. Okay, Dark Shocks is ready whenever you are. Okay, I do. I have a slight delay. In let me just make sure. I think you're hearing me just fine now. So uh, just go ahead and get yourself ready. And do you have your bingo card pulled up? My bingo card pulled up. Yes. Uh, yes, I do. Um, Looks like your stream's buffering a little bit. Seeing your desktop. Yeah, it, it does that. I'm going to go check my OBS, see if there's anything there that's fishy. OK, that looks good. So there is Ribbon. <clears throat> OK. <laughs> yeah, there's yep. the. Uh, so we're going to start in uh, three, two, one, go. All right, and so they are uh, they are off, um, having a little buffering delay on Adagote's side, unfortunately. Uh, Dark Shocks seems to be heading in and uh, turning on the steam to the telescope first thing. That's usually a good thing to do. Um, Adagot seems to be having technical difficulties here. Uh, there you go. His stream was buffering. So uh, Dark Shocks took the, the smart strategy of going for the uh, first, or going for the center square on the bingo tile. Um, there are three gate room texts. Those are the Denis writings on the walls in the, the gate room. That's the rotating room. So both uh, runners heading to that right away and uh, picking that square up. Um, let's see where they head to next. Looks like uh, Dark Shocks might be taking a moment to read the bingo board and determine a strategy. Um, unfortunately, still having some buffering on Adagote's side, but hopefully that gets resolved. So we'll see what sort of uh, routes they take. We've got various things that you can see, like uh, lowering the submarine, um, opening domes, catching frog. Uh, some of the other ones that you might see if you have a question about it, uh, things like press the blue switch. When we talk about blue switch or purple switch, that means at uh, Gen's survey throne on Survey Island, pressing the switch that is associated with the colored light. All right, now they're moving along. Um, Dark Shocks headed down and opened up the temple. And looks like he's going to head to Jungle Island here. Uh, lower the submarine just got tagged, but I'm getting some pretty, I must be getting pretty significant lag on the actual gameplay stream because I haven't seen anyone lower the submarine. <laughs> so apologies for some technical difficulties there. Uh, so Adagote and speeding through the uh, village, Dark Shocks uh, uh, closing the warp gallows there. Um, and then heading down the uh, down the elevator, we end up with the synchronicity of them both uh, in the elevator at the same time. Um, oh yeah, one of them had wiggled the wooden gate that was uh, back on uh, the first island, back on Temple Island. That's the gate that you have to scoot underneath. Uh, question in chat: Do the players fill out the bingo cards themselves as they do it? The answer is yes, they do. All right, so it looks like uh, both runners are going for that central column. So 
Apparently someone has checked in on the prisoner at the gallows. Uh, if they're going for that, then they have to uh, activate the Survey Island survey. So that would mean getting to Survey Island and then uh, clicking on the, the L-shaped island and, and uh, activating it. And then they'd also have to open the Destroyed Crater Island link book. That's a tough one because uh, if you're opening the Destroyed Crater Island link book, that means you have to have freed Catherine, which means you need to have captured Gan. Uh, and Gan is an unskippable cutscene. So that's a lot of baked in time. So it's interesting that they're both going for that route. Uh, question, let's see, is Crater Island also Book Assembly Island? Yes. Uh, Crater Island, Book Assembly Island, the one with Boiler Island, it's sometimes called. Lots of names that you see. Yeah, unfortunately, the car, the, both of the streams seem to be very far behind uh, the actual card. So uh, it's a little hard to commentate. Uh, we can, what we see is now they're both on Boiler, Crater, Bookmaking Island. Uh, Dark Shock's activating the chipper there, or it looked like he was about to, but then stepping away. Uh, Adigo has moved on to Survey Island and has now uh, activated uh, the Survey Island survey. So Adigo in the blue. Um, so it looks like Dark Trucks may have pivoted here and may be working on that lower row because he probably correctly recognized that that top central open destroyed Crater Island Lake book is going to be very slow uh, to, to do. Um, so if Dark Shocks is going for that, then he's going to need to link to Crater Island from 233, which does not require actually capturing Gan. Um, and you can skip the Gan cutscene if you don't uh, bring the trap book to him. Um, and then opening the fire marble dome on survey just requires the code. Here's a nice bit of synchronicity where both of them seeing the code and having to memorize it. So we've got a nice one, six, 16, 19 on it. I missed it, went fast on dark shocks. So we'll see if Adigo does in fact try to do a full run through the game and uh, finish that central column, or if he pivots and tries to do something different. Looks like Dark Shocks is doing, getting set up to get to the uh, fire marble puzzle, which Adagot appears to be at, or as we call it, the waffle iron of doom. So both of them, both runners inputting the solution, and presumably they're gonna be now heading to uh, 233 from uh, from the linking book. Oh, well, no, Adagot, excuse me, Adagot seems to be heading back to uh, Crater Island. So wonder what he's up to here. I guess we'll find out. Oh, he seems to be activating, oh, no, he's not activating the chipper. He's, looks like he was heading back to Jungle Island. I'm not sure what his strategy is there. So Dark Shocks, they're trying to get a uh, scope skip glitch where if you, uh, if you actually uh, click the button within the first four frames of the video starting, uh, you actually can get it correct and you skip most of the animation. All right, so Dark Shock's looking at the book, but it doesn't look like he's summoned again. And he can't, act, he can't use those books until he has actually talked again. Again needs to turn it on. There, he's realized that. Here it looks like Anigo is heading to Tay uh, which means that implies that he is going to try to actually complete uh, the entire uh, central column because there would be no good reason to do that unless you needed to capture again. Otherwise, it's just a time loss. Um, unfortunately for Dark Shocks, he had already been to Tay, uh, which he didn't need to do for that central column. And so he also has to wait through this long cutscene. This is one case where not going to Tay would have been the uh, would have been the faster option. So we get to watch John Keston read a book here. Um, the good news for Dark Shocks is that he's already at the Gan cutscene, 
And all he has to do is link to Crater Island from 233 and then open the Fire Marble Dome on Survey Island, which he could again go through 233 to, uh, to do, uh, which is pretty fast. Um, had to go here still needing to uh, do something. I'm not quite sure what he's up to here. I think he had forgotten or he had never, I'm not sure what, what he's up to. I'm, I'm expecting him to head back or try to head to 233 pretty soon. Question if, if one was in Tay, why isn't meet with Neil ticked? Probably because they just missed it and it's not on their minds because they're planning on uh, they're planning on a different route. Uh, Adagote's struggling a little bit with the uh, dome with the waffle iron code. I think he had had one of the um, fire models in the wrong position, it looked like. And so the books were not powered. All right. So Dark Shock's here opening the fire marble dome on survey. There he's done that. And now he's going to input the dome code and link back to 233 and then link back to Crater Island and uh, that will be a bingo for him. So it's real easy in Riven to uh, forget to do some of the setup that's required and that can set you back pretty dramatically uh, later, later in the bingo um, as you are trying to get to where you need to go. Uh, Darkshock's choosing the wrong book here. He needs to go to Crater Island. No, that's Jungle. That. So Darkshock's, unfortunately, he had it in the palm of his hand, but he went to the wrong island. So uh, giving Adagote a chance to catch up here. That's, that's maybe the opening that Adagote need, needed, but he still has about a minute of cutscene left before uh, he can even go to uh, free Catherine. And he still needs to get the prison code to uh, save Catherine and then get back to 233 after saving Catherine. So now uh, Dark Shocks has gotten the bingo. That's it, right? <laughs> by linking to Crater Island. Yeah, you almost threw it there by uh, going to the rock, forgetting what the what Crater Island was. That's actually his first time beating me. GG. That is that is correct. That is also my first time beating at a coach. In all and the that practice. Was, and that was because I, I was being dumb most of the time. GG. <laughs> it gets, GG. It gets did, difficult did you see what happened to me on the on fire the marble code? I had the red one. It was like one away from where it was supposed to be. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, you had that in the wrong spot. Unfortunately, there was a, a huge amount of lag from your stream and ago. Um, so that was uh, an example of a Riven bingo run. Um, they're pretty fun to do. Uh, again, just like we said before with the Mist Bingo, if anyone's interested, um, join the Speed Guild of Speedrunners Discord. Uh, we'd love to uh, set up bingo races and all sorts of fun things. They're, I've participated in them before. They're a good time. Um, so that's, that's the Riven Bingo Race. I think up next we have uh, Adagote running Mist 4 Revelation. Yay, I get to do more <laughs> right next to each other. Wee. Uh, Adagote, if you're ready, just turn on your video and I can uh, spotlight you. Okay. Oh, I should have turned on the transition thing. Oops. Okay, my, my actual face cam is not working, so we'll just share and share. Screen share. Okay, hello. Are you here? Yes. 
accidentally muted myself uh, in Hopper. Hi, I'm here. Uh, just catching up with the chat. Uh, you'll see what the Taz presentation is. Uh, that's going to be fun. Uh, there's no XR because nobody wanted to run it. Uh, hi, it's me, Pat. Um, yeah, um, I'm a person who exists. Uh, as we go, maybe turn down the game audio, it's a bit loud. Is that better? A bit uh, bit, turn it down a bit more. Yeah, that's good. Yes, the music in this game is great. I love the music. Um, right, so this is Mist 4. This is the longest speedrun because it's very slow. Uh, yes, these loot characters are very annoying. We wish it could go faster. Uh, but apparently, the I'm gonna, transitions are hard-coded to be slow. I'm going to chime in. you got to turn down the music further. It's still too loud? Or? Yeah, it's still loud. The other sounds are fine, but the music is way too loud. Maybe turn it down to 10? Oh, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's much better. better. Much better. Okay. Is that good? Mm -hmm. Um. Oh, uh, do we not have an overlay for this? Now because he's screen sharing. Uh, just to be sure, I am pinned, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Okay, we don't have an overlay. It's just he's not uh, using a VCAM, so. Fine. Uh, okay, so this is Revelation. Uh, everyone probably knows this game, I hope. Um, Revelation has some of the most interesting movement tech because of the camera system. Um, so if you, I think if you start, we can um, explain the basics of the speedrun while the opening cutscene plays. If you're ready, Atticoat. All right, uh, I'm ready. Whenever is there's still a timer in the in the thing, right? Uh, there is no time invisible. Oh. So I guess we're doing the screen sharey thing. Well, if you can use your VCAM, then we can use an overlay. But I thought you said you were having problems with that. Oh wait. Oh, that that. Oh, I was I was supposed to use OBS virtual camera. That's what I was supposed to do. Oh. Oh huh. Okay. Technical problem. I, I didn't know that. If I knew that, I would have. Oh, and of course, I'm still streaming. <laughs> so everyone heard you on my stream. <laughs> OBS. Okay. Okay. Um, why isn't it displaying anything? You have you to click cost. start virtual camera on the bottom right. Oh, okay. Uh, bottom right. Where's bottom? And I think we're going to need uh, Atticoat spotlighted again. Near the start streaming button. Uh, okay. There we go. Hey. Now it looks reversed yep. in the zoom. It looks fine to me. That's OK. It's uh, right on, on our side. OK, I'm just going to close out zoom because that's going to drive me nuts. OK, come on. OK, we have the game. No overlay, no timer. Just uh, let me know when you're ready, Mysterium people. I think we're ready to go whenever. Yeah, you can go whenever. We're just trying to get the overlay, but uh, it sounds like it's not going to happen. So, okie dokie, here we oh, go. Well. Let's go. Okay, so yeah, the the camera tech in this game is kind of weird. Um, when you move the camera, if you click, uh, do you click early or do you, um? because I've never actually done it myself, but you can 
make the camera keep moving even as the game moves to a new mode, uh, which can help in a number of places to set up the camera for the next thing you need to click. Uh, I think we call that swooping. And Gelly discovered that. Thank you, Gelly. If you're still here listening. Yes, you are. Um, we. Uh, so, yes. Um, camera alignment is a very big part of this game. Uh, much like an XR, but we haven't done an XR run. Because uh, if you are pointing in the wrong direction, when the game decides that you need to be looking in one particular place, it will very slowly pen you there. Uh, we have no game audio. Um, uh, Atigo, we have no game audio. I think that's just part of using the virtual camera. Um, I think that just means you've set it up wrong because we had game audio everywhere else, I think. <sighs> Did we? Didn't you have to use, like, I probably set it up wrong. Oh, well. Oh, come on. <laughs> Should have been connected to virtual. What, what? The Zoom's blocking it. I'm sorry about uh, the audio. It'll just be a silent speed run and we'll have to keep talking. That's fine. Uh, so if you notice there, the game panned ever so slightly. That was it making sure that the camera is pointing in the right direction for a cutscene. And every time the game does that, it's best to try and point the camera there yourself. Yes, it's actually a really nice thing, changing the cursor color. I've never done it, though. Oh, we'll have to do the sound effects ourselves. Oh, no. No. Um, I'll pass on that. All right. <laughs> but Kat I can read not. the dialogue. I can read the dialogue. Oh, you want me to do the dialogue? Oh, fine, I'll do the dialogue. Walking noise. Walking noise. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my friend. I see you've made it in one piece. So Yisha's driving wasn't too erratic, I hope. Nervous laughter. The well, you're probably wondering why I asked you here. Do an HS voice. I can't do an HS voice. Uh, the truth is, I need your help. As you know, my sons, Sirius and Akinar, were imprisoned. Uh, were trapped 20 years ago after we destroyed many of the ages I've written. I'm not going to do this for the whole game. There's too much, there's too much narration. There's too much dialogue. Yeah, I, I'm probably not going to read it either. <laughs> we all know the dialogue. Yeah. Uh, so this is the first major skip of the game coming up. Uh, it turns out that you do not need to solve this puzzle. Uh, you do not even need to look at it. You just have to wait for Atrus to tell you to look at it. And then you look away. And then Atrus will tell you it's not too difficult. And so you do it again, and then we uh, move to the uh, move on with the game. Uh, I my original speed run. I can't remember if I did it or not. I I knew that you could zoom in and zoom out, and it would skip the uh, skip the puzzle. But I did not know originally that you could just look away, and I found that. After a while, I do not remember when. My memory is not great. Uh, but yeah, we we have skipped the uh, the uh, the wave puzzle. Uh, it's not that no difficult. The slider today. <laughs> there will be no moving the slider today. Uh, so now Attico is just waiting for the next uh, camera pan down to Atrus's journal. And we just sit here for a while. It's great. Uh, you think eventually you just wouldn't pick up the nature schools. You'd think. Um, so, yeah. You must have. Uh, let's see what's coming up. Coming up, we've got the, the water wheel. 
and the power box. There's nothing particularly special going on there. Uh, we do a particular uh, a particular solution of the power box because we think it may be faster, uh, but nobody's bothered to actually try and time it because if it is faster, it's not faster by much. Um, and that's Tamana pretty much. Yes, yeah, so there's, there's the camera pan. And now we just wait to be able to move forward with the game. Um, the elevator is one of my favorite parts of this game. Yes, we actually play with special immersive effects on uh, because it uh, gives you a free camera during the elevator rides, which lets you open the door much faster. Uh, as Atticoat will hopefully demonstrate. Uh, you do not need to look at it. You can look at, if you look out the window and unlock the cursor, you can do exactly the same thing. And you can open it much faster than that. Okay, so Atticoat did not do it. Um, the way you're meant to do it with special immersive effects. Special what effects? Special immersive effects. It's a thing that happens. It's one of the game settings. It's, I, I don't actually know everything it does, but one of the things it does is give you a free camera in the elevator. Uh, yes, we usually run in French. Uh, it helps mostly for the, uh, for the dream uh, I don't care about her stupid game. Blizzard. Because for some reason, the cutscene in Dream is not a real cutscene. It's an animation that plays over dialogue. So if you make the dialogue shorter, the animation is shorter. For some reason. Uh, so that is why we usually run in French. Yeah, I, I would have run French, but I don't know how to change the language settings. There, there, there wasn't a thing in the settings for it. Uh, you, ha you have to install the, uh, the, the French version of the game. Um, so you, yeah, you, you have to reinstall the game. It's, you can't change it in game, which is not great. Uh, so yeah, this is the power box. There is absolutely nothing special going on here. Um, man, there really isn't much to talk about with this game, is there? It goes so slowly. Oh, yeah. Um... I suppose we could talk about the, um, there are some plans to mod this game to skip all the cutscenes. Like this Yay, one. no more bad acting. <laughs> um, but as you can imagine, it's taking a while because this game is complicated. Uh, but if we ever do manage to get cutscenes working, this game will be a lot easier to run because it will be like 20 minutes shorter. I think it's more like 15. Wasn't Ubisoft going to implement it, but they had some crashing issues? Hmm? I thought I thought Ubisoft had plans to imp implement cutscene skips, but they couldn't because it was uh, very crashy. Oh, I don't know. I don't know anything about the development of this game. Oh, that was... Did you dunk goose? Oh come on! Tap tap. Yeah, if you if you click outside of a clickable region in this game, the cursor either makes a swooshing, uh, grabbing it air movement, or it taps something, and either way, is very slow. Uh, possibly using cutscenes to delay. Yeah, it's it's possible. I honestly do not know the reason.
eliminate the narrative. Well, that's the whole point of going fast. You skip the story. Uh, would, a cut, would a cut scene this mod be allowed? Yes, because I say so. Yes, it would be a different category. Uh, but I am all in favor of having a cut scene this category. So it will happen if someone can make it work. <laughs> Eliminate the narrative in a missed game. Have you seen any of the previous speedruns? There's no narrative there. <laughs> we skip everything. I mean, it's Except not canon in its own universe, but don't get Gelly started on that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, uh, I believe we were actually have uh, cutscene this. Uh, yes, we have cutscene skip category for Miss Five um, after the task presentation. Uh, right, okay, so we're now here at Atris's bedroom, Atris and Catherine's bedroom. Um, again, there's nothing really going on here, it's just the intended solutions. Oh, shoot. <laughs> and we get the necklace that we never use. We need the narrator to keep us late through this one. I'm trying my best. Oh, shoot. If we had a spirit guide category, we um, might actually use the necklace because you actually need it to score points for the water guide. Yes. Yeah, there have been talks about uh, making new categories for this game by doing weird things. Um, like unlocking specific spirit guides. I want to do one where you bully Yisha because Yisha sucks. <laughs> I said it. I don't like Yisha. <laughs> oh, if I knew that, I would have bullied her. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, yes, you can solve it without the laser. <laughs> Bully percent. That is, that is probably what I would call it. I might call it jerk percent because you can be a jerk to more people than just Yisha, but it's mainly Yisha. Wait, how can you be a jerk to more people than Yeisha? I, I, I need to know this because I like being jerks to people in video games. Not helping Atris at the start of the game. That's really the only other thing you can do. Oh. Uh, but yeah, all the things you can do to bully Yeisha, you can not take the photo, you can release her beetles, and you can not show up to look at the lizards. Not show up to look at what? Uh, the lizard she wants to show you. You know, hey, come here, you got to see this. She wants to show you a lizard. If you don't go straight to her, say by detouring into the uh, into Catherine's workshop to release Yisha's beetles, uh, then Yisha gets mad you didn't come to see her lizard. I actually do like Mist 4, but I just like making jokes about it because <laughs> they're funny. Yes. Uh, so this is an interesting skip if Atigo. Oh, Atigo got it. Uh, so you can actually click the hotspot to go down um, while the camera is coming to the rock ship. And it's actually kind of tricky to get. If you have the cursor in the wrong place, the camera will go the wrong way. Uh, why don't you like her? She's kind of a bad character. Um, in I'd say she's game, okay in this game, but in Uru, in oh my gosh, does no. nothing. In Uru, I, everything goes wild. Um, Yisha magic particularly, I don't really like Yisha magic. Uh, where the mine and forge are. Yeah, that would be nice to know. You would date Yisha? Which version of Yisha? <laughs> The one where she has a god complex? Yeah, the one where she's got a god complex. Um, you do you, I guess?
<laughs> that, yeah. that reminds me, there was a streamer that I, we were watching play Uru, and we jokingly called Yisha in Uru his biker girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Uh, so yeah, Spire. There's nothing really much going on in Spire. Uh, it's just all intended solutions. So there's not really much to talk about. Uh, until we get to the uh, the keyboard, the keyboard is something I spent a while optimizing. Uh, there is a really fast um, route for it. Are you going to do the fast route or the safe? I'm route? going to try. You're going I to try. I remember fast it route. exactly, okay. but I'm going so, to try it. <laughs> normally, normally the way you solve the keyboard is you do Nara last because you only have 15 seconds once you set it. Uh, the fast route does Nara second, because if you do Nara last, you have a really slow animation of the keyboard resetting uh, when you open it up. So by putting it second, we can finish with, um, is it, it's, it's quartz, I think, uh, the 317 combination, because that has the lowest, um, uh, the lowest setting out of all four um, all four combinations. Uh, all the others have a higher, uh, highest setting. So we finish with quartz and uh, the keyboard opens much faster. Uh, right, so here we're just finishing setting up the power for the throne. Uh, I have not been keeping up with chat at all. What on earth is going on in chat? Oh, oh uh, they're, they're getting Gelly started on, on Mist Cannon. Oh, you are Billy and Gelly about Mist Cannon. Awesome. I endorse this. A beef and cheddar relto page. Everyone's hungry. Yeah, I relate to that. Yeah, I had some ramen noodles before I ran and some tea that my mom gave me. Right, so this is setting up the uh, the frequencies. Let's go one more. And three. There we go. And Buttons on the left. There we go. Okay, now we're doing the keyboard. And this is, I'm going to be quiet and let Atagoat concentrate because it's complicated. Good luck. Uh, you missed rock. Yep, good, go, 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 go. Darn it. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah, you need to go fast. You gotta go fast. Okay, you're going to do the slow route or? Don't wait, you're trying again. Uh, tip, don't wait for the crystal to, well, for the thing to start vibrating, just go to the next one. There this we go. Hey, you got it. Uh, this is this was the one I was worried about, and uh, it turns out I was worried about it for good reason because it did not go well at all. <laughs> yeah, the the fast strat you really do have to go fast to get it consistently. I uh, I, I, I did wonder if this, it so is the harder one. I just. 
this is why you don't run games that you newly run at marathons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I promise if we do this again next year, I'll be better at Mist 4. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, so this is Spire almost done. We just need to get the medallion. At least I won't be screwing up the snake this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, was this puzzle better after patch 103? Uh, not a clue. I know one of them changed, but it might be the Mangry puzzle in Haven. Okay. B C C G R Y. I've taken a print screen as well, uh, just in case. Yep, I have a nice record of it. Boot the Snoop Percent. Uh, Boot the Snoop Percent would actually be quite interesting because that would basically be a Haven run. Uh, booping the Snoot of the, uh, the Haven Dragon. I use my quick but sloppy handwriting for that part. Hmm. Uh, yeah, we do have an, we do have individual level categories, uh, so you can run just fire, just haven, just Serenia. Uh, there isn't a Tamana IL because well, Tamana isn't one segment. It's not could, one level really. You could make Tamana one segment by say timing the time it takes for you to get to, like well, you'd go through multiple ages, but you could. Maybe it would be better to have it as a full game category. I don't know, but you could time it to getting to Atrus's office from exile. Oh, uh, something I want to mention about this bookcase. Uh, the, the, there are five books that are the family members. All the other books are actually Cyan employees. Uh, if oh, you I translate them. That's yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. Is, so... so there's Rand, Robin, Rawa, Chuck... Uh, off the top of my head. Um, I don't have a pic. Actually, I have there is a picture handy um, in my guide. Um, let's have a look. Yeah, so there is um, going from left to right, the top shelf is Cyrus, uh, Richard, uh, Cyrus. Um, Avias. Some of these, I don't know if they are real people, but... Uh, oh, you know. stupid spirit guides. <laughs> um, Everybody boo the spirit guide. That was not cool. Yeah, I think move. actually not some of these are just plain red herrings, but uh, there's also a George. Uh, then on the bottom shelf, there's Chuck, Rand, uh, Robin, uh, who's that? Uh, and then there's Rawa and Chris. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I am. Uh, yes, I think a couple of them are um, are just gibberish. So I think the Cyrus um, book is gibberish for Cyrus. And there's one that's... Um, Oh, water too? Akmar, Are you kidding me? Uh, for Akinar, I think. We got double spirit guides here. Double spirit? Uh. Oh, that sucks. Uh, the spirit puzzle has always been the reason you cannot complete the game. Uh, you can actually skip it. That's coming up. You know, my, when my dad first played the game, he actually did not go to Dream. He was able to figure out the marble puzzle quickly. Uh, yeah, the marble, the marble puzzle is not that hard to work out. You don't really need to hint. 
All spirits percent. That's actually a good idea where you start a new game to get each spirit. Uh, well, what do you mean by all spirits, Coda? Well, I mean, you could run around Serenia to get uh, to encounter all three spirit guides. Um, yeah, reset the game until you've collected all of them. Yeah, you could do three three different playthroughs to uh, acquire all three different spirits, but that would take a long time. Uh, you could probably do a uh, complete Haven in order to unbox Serenia because I believe Haven's faster. Because uh, you can actually just go straight to the final puzzle. Uh, well, not quite straight there. You have to get into the jungle, uh, unlock the lake house, and then go straight to the final puzzle. Uh, Atagun, are you going to do Jaffra's uh, new route here? Or the old route. Oh wait, Jaffras has a new route here now. I did not yeah. know about that. Yeah, I will. Just... I will walk you through it. So after this cutscene, do not go to the uh, the um, the water wheel. Oh, do I pull the lever? Yeah, pulls the lever, goes through, get the uh, get the zip node, and then zip back here and uh, oh, do the water smart. wheel. Then zip back. Uh, we don't know if it's faster, but it does skip uh, an opportunity to get a spirit. Uh, to get a spirit encounter. Um, I, saw, I saw that. I'm pretty sure it's new. Did you? Was it you who did it, not Jaffras? Someone did it in a recent, uh, in a recent uh, submission. And that was the first I ever saw of it. It was one of you two. Or you'll screw up everything. And you can be six months ago. No, this was recent. It's a part of the plan. Cirrus's Cirrus plan. <laughs> He's got Isha. <laughs> oh, the voice acting. Where's the blasted Lincoln book? You know, it'd be really fun fan dubbing this game. He's going to kill Fala. <laughs> that would actually be. Uh, should really I, should fun I, to I'm going to, when we get to the memory, old memory chamber, I'm just going to voice all of Akinar's lines. <laughs> Since we don't have audio anyway, it'll be, a, it'll be, you'll get to experience right. the. Uh, the the only thing I'm not sure is where the zip node is. Uh, zip node is uh, just right outside. You have to. It's right where the face is uh, for the. Oh, for the love of! I'm not no, used you can to coming straight down there, here. Yeah, up here. Ham percent. <laughs> what is a ham percent? Like I. I don't know. Ah, it's there. Cool. Yeah, and then you sit in the, uh, the rope. Yeah, that one. And now you do the water wheel. Uh, yes, transitions are very slow in this game. They are also hardware dependent. Uh, if your hardware is slow for some reason, then all the transitions will take longer. Pet the snake. I'd rather pet the mangries, but we got to pet this stupid snake. Boop. The snoot has been booped. Yes, we apologize for the lack of timer. Right. And now you just sit back to the zip mode. Okay, believe it or not, we're only halfway through. <laughs> Have someone play through Mist 4 and have people voice act each character. That would be great. But 
we may be able to actually mod it in. Uh, that is something that's entirely possible to do. Uh, right, left. Right. Right, left. Yeah, I struggle. I, if I'm completely honest, I struggle with this puzzle because the science here doesn't make any sense at all. Sure it does. It's simple water displacement. Uh, okay, yeah, so what, but like, what I need to get one through. scoop, empty it, and then, like, shouldn't... <laughs> uh, so what Atico is doing here is a form of cutscene skipping. Uh, if you change node, any, uh, any animation that's currently ongoing will immediately end. Uh, have we explained the auto splitter? Uh, no, because we're not using it. Yeah. Uh, it's right, right, left, right, right, left. Right. Mm -hmm. Right, 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 left, right, right, left. Uh, what time are we at? Uh, good question. Uh, 32 minutes. Cool. Uh, I think that's pretty good for uh, this point in the game. Yeah, um, fun fact, my, my splits were screwed up here. So, so I actually had a while where my splits were not being honest with them because I have um, my, my skip split keys bound to my mouse and it accidentally did that during the splits. Um, yeah, I think it's a, a fair way behind the... Um, uh, the Is that drained enough? Yeah, that's drained enough. Uh, right, so this is the color puzzle. This is the big mm -hmm. RNG Let's aspect see. of the run, and it can kill yeah, a run why. if you get a bad setting. BCC. It's BCCGRY, right? Um, let's have a look. Um, blue, cyan, cyan, green, red, yellow. Uh, you've got blue at the top. And that's the only one, but you've got yellow next to the uh, correct one. Um, if you move that green though from the left over, uh, you can move the two signs around and uh, make a slot for the yellow. Uh, green on the left, yeah, that one, move that one. And just move the signs around. Oh, come on. And then the yellow can go in and then the magenta can go in uh, from the top. And then you can slip, uh, put a green in the top position. Uh, you need to get that red out. So if you move the blue. Yeah, move the blue. Uh, move the blue and then the red. And then you can put the cyan in and the yellow in. Yeah, that one works. And then put another sign in that one. Then if you free, uh, free up that yellow in the bottom uh, by moving the two greens, um, move, uh, put the red in. Yeah, first. I should move the red. That's what I was thinking of doing. Yeah. And then get that green out of the way. Uh, no. A yellow in from the bottom. Uh, you need to you need to put the yellow. Yeah, in. Yellow needs to move here. Mm -hmm. And then the blue. Blue. And red. Here. Teamwork. Red here. That's good, I think. And that's good. That's good. So a good thing we didn't screw this up. At least. Uh, this game does not have a colorblind mode. It was released in two. 2006? Accessibility was not on people's radar back then. You know... Uh, I imagine... 2004, thank you. I imagine some games did, but uh, it was not a big thing like it is now. 
if there were ever a remake of this game, I imagine a colorblind mode would be um, very important. Well, I wonder if we could mod it to have a colorblind friendly mode, like a colorblind blind friendly mod. Modding the game outside of changing cutscenes and subtitles is probably not um, probably not feasible without um, decompiling the entire game and rebuilding it from scratch. I, I don't think it would really work. Um, we, would probably, we would probably need a completely rebuilt uh, list for. You think it could be done? Maybe. I doubt it, though. Okay, here we go. Akinar voice acting. Here we go. Stop! No, stop! This is not Yisha! What? He used the machine. He forced the memory chamber to remove all of her memories. Liar! This is Cirrus, I tell you. This is crazy. He killed Cirrus when he tried to save me. Seriously, would I kill my own brother? Yes. <laughs> no, he removed Yisha's memories. And he used a machine to plant his own memories inside her head. Look, he's got... What? Oh, okay. She is serious, I tell you. Look, he's got the lifestyle. Serenia's memory chamber can't survive without the Shut lifestyle. Shut up! <laughs> but I'm your little sister. <laughs> Just <laughs> playing games with you. See, you see, he's a killer. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> I'm having way too much fun. I told you already. I sold this to stop Sears from hurting father, but I was wrong. He was after Yisha all along. No, he's the one who kidnapped me, not Sears. Look, we have to set everybody's memories back right, right again. The Amber Lever. Turn the Amber Lever to begin the process. No, you kill me if you Hurry! Before the memory chamber gets too weak to power the transfer. Don't listen to him. <laughs> No, you fool. My performance was perfect. Thank you. You may have won this round, brother, but it's not over. Black. No, <laughs> serious. No. Thank you. Uh, Something has gone wrong. That was a lot of fun. I did not plan on doing that, but it seemed like... The memories right are not coming back again. It was awesome. Thank you. There's got to be some way that I can reach her. If only I had a... No, now, not now, now. The memory chamber can't fail. No! <laughs> so it's dramatic. Listen to me. The memory chamber is dying. And if it dies, it'll stop the transfer. And I don't know what that will do to Yisha's mind. I can keep the chamber alive using the stone. But you have got to find a way to reach her, to the dream world, and try and find a way of getting through to her memories. It's the only chance we have. Use the other chair. But hurry. I don't know how much time you'll have after I use the stone. Gosh, that hurts my voice. Uh, right, so this is the final part of the game. Uh, the final dream puzzle. Uh, and this is probably my biggest contribution to the roots. Um, I have a safe to say here in case... Oh, Something you do? Something goes wrong. Oh, oh good. Uh, I spent so long optimizing the solutions to this. Because uh, we started off using the solution provided by the in-game hints. Um, but I decided one day that that was too slow. So I just sat down with some pencil and paper and started do solving the puzzles by hand seeing what worked and what didn't. And I managed to cut down the solutions by quite a bit. Uh, I'm particularly proud of the solution to the first puzzle because there is very little movement 
while you're not holding a stack of symbols. Also, Atticode, if you turn the camera to the right of it, about 120 degrees, uh, that's the that's where the camera is going to pan in a moment. Uh, will, will, will those cutscenes skip? Might be able to skip Peter Gabriel. Um, yes, if we remove all the dialogue, and sure. assuming that doesn't crash the game. Interloper. I, I'm sorry. I love that line. Well, we want to make the game faster. I, it's not like I don't like Peter Gabriel. It's just that we have to make the game faster. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, if we were playing on French, it's not even Peter Gabriel. It's this French lady who's probably credited, but uh, who reads credits? <laughs> Peter Gabriel from Mysterium 2022. That would actually be kind of funny. Okay, first memory. Here we go. Uh, do you want me to be quiet so you can concentrate on the solution? Yes, yes. Okay. Good luck. Green. Right. Chessboard. Chessboard, right, left, left, chessboard, left, right, crest, right, left, right, right, left, right, book, Right, right, left, right, left. And then picture is, oh, come on, pick it up. Left, 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 right, left. And the crest is right, left, right. And then book is right, left, left. Ah, oh, you got it. Good job. Reading the instructions out loud really helps. Yeah, I actually, in my notes, I've replaced uh, saying which um, which image it is with just which way to turn to get to it. And I found that sped me up so much. Uh, what, um, what did you do to speed you up again? I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Uh, instead of saying figurine, picture, book, I instead wrote down which way to turn to get to the next stack you pick up. So like the first, the first line is turn left and grab instead of grab the figurine. Mm -hmm. uh, so that way I don't have to remember where they all are. I just know, oh, I need to turn left here and then grab. And I found that made me go a lot faster. It's working. Oh, it's right there. Okay, globe is globe, right, left, chair, right, left, left, globe, 
left, right, life pod, left, left, right, 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 globe, left, right, right, globe, right, life pod. Oh, this is why we have safety saves. Yeah, I was wondering why you were saying left and leaving right and saying right and leaving left. Okay, so wait a sec. Uh, okay, this is Dream Puzzle 2. Good. So, right, <laughs> left. If I'm completely honest, uh, a part of the reason is, that I might not be focusing as much is I do have to go to the bathroom pretty bad. <laughs> Well, fortunately, you are almost there. You're right. almost the game. Left. Oh, you've, left. you've done it again, I think. You're saying left and going Globe. right. Oh, wait, did I, did I screw up? I think you screwed it up again. Oh, <laughs> uh, Well, it's a good thing we have safety saves. <laughs> All right. Uh... Yeah, this is also why I changed my notes from from having L and R to left right. and right arrows. Left chair is right. Left left globe is can pick up left right. Life pod is to left, left, right, left, right, right, right. Globe is left, right, right. And the globe is right. Life pod is left, right, left, left, right, left. Yay! And that's the final puzzle. Uh, but it's not actually the end of the game uh, because timing doesn't end until you get out of the chair back in Serenia. Uh, because that triggers the final cutscene. Uh, okay, that's, yeah, if that helps you, that is actually how, um, I think I organized my notes, uh, my notes in the guide that way. Um, but yeah, if that helps you, uh, good for you. Um, doesn't help me. <laughs> um, usually, usually though, what happens is you learn the route well enough that you can abbreviate everything. Um, the more you play the game, the more, just the more familiar you get with it all. And there goes Cirrus off to die. Bye, Cirrus. I do not want to know how painful that death is. Um, probably not at all, given that he's asleep. Well, like, but technically your consciousness is in dream, so you would feel the pain of dream. Would you, though? Well, is dream pain... works differently from, like, an actual dream, because dream is actually, like, us. it's kind of like a sub-world of Serenia, yeah, like... Well, yeah, but only your mind goes there. Can your mind really experience pain without a body? Philosophy with cats. Yeah, um, how... I I don't think you can look in his pods. 
uh, belly. Um, okay, so his body is next to the stairs up to the chamber. Um, there is a life pod on the wall and which you can examine. And that's the end of the game. Um, cool. Uh, up next, we have the, uh, the Taz uh, presentation with Gelly and Flapjack. Um, so I think we're just going to hand straight over to them. Uh, if they're ready, are you guys ready, Gelly and Flapjack? I think we are. Shockingly. Awesome. All right. Thank you, everybody. I yeah. have a good day. Yep. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, we'll actually both be back for um, Mr. Five later after the Taz. Uh, so catch you then. Enjoy the Taz. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Hi. my friend? Oh, geez, it's already time. Well, holy beans. Okay. Uh, so you wrote this. In... What? You wrote this. You made this. I, I did make this. I didn't write nothing. So let's talk a little bit about, about uh, TASs. So a TAS, or a tool-assisted speedrun, is creating a list of inputs at some time, uh, usually with a lot of tools like being able to make save states where you get to go back in time to, to you know, in case you make a mistake, you can redo that section. Uh, you can do frame advance where you go by the smallest section of time and change a thing and so on. And the end result is a list of inputs that you can put through the game to play the game theoretically as fast as possible. Uh, for a lot of games, it looks a lot closer to human uh, gameplay. In fact, I've done a couple of tasks where the human record is only about 0.5 seconds away from perfection. Uh, shout outs to Plank Boy. He did a lot of um, like Freddy Fish and games like that. That'll be actually pretty close. For a game like this, not even close. Not this even is, close. This is not a oh. comparison to see what the human limit is. This is a me trying to stretch the game as far as it's able. So, um, I, I was I was one. just reminded by uh, the Mysterium uh, organizers who definitely thought one step ahead. Um, there is going to be a solid photosensitivity warning on both oh, of these yes. tasks. Yes. Uh, um, <laughs> this is very flashy. Um, yeah. To, considering how a lot of this is going to be me and Flabjack being nerds about the game you can totally not have to watch this and still get an understanding of what we're talking about. So you're not going to be missing out on, on too much if you need to uh, step out. So no yep. Um So the two runs that we're going to be looking at, is, this is the first one, uh, missed all pages uh, in less than six minutes. So the current all pages record is something like 10 minutes. Uh, so this this shaves off four minutes by, by pure execution. Um, I'm not yep. sure exactly how good this is going to go, <laughs> considering I'm going to be stopping you. Uh, do you know how to frame advance on YouTube, right? I do know how to frame advance on YouTube. Okay. We're not going to do that through the whole run, but there might be points where I'm like, hey, let's frame advance through this just to see what's going on. Okay. So like, uh, you could, yeah. So if you start the run. All right. Here we go. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to probably tell you to pause real quick, but. Oh, hang on one minute. Does this sound I just realized not... that my audio is a little is a little messed up. I'm going to fix it momentarily. Okay. There we go. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Oh, it's, oh, it's <laughs> a little laggy. <laughs> okay. Are you sure? Okay. First of all, pause for a second. I can't hear <laughs> nothing. <laughs> is it, is it coming up on Twitch? Can y'all hear mist like sounds? It's not going to sound like mist, but it's going to be like you'll hear miss that because I can't hear it on my end. Um, and the other thing is it's going, I think too fast. It might be, it okay, is not no going sound. to, I can double check the, the speed settings, but I believe it is set to 
Playback speed is normal. <laughs> okay. It's been a while. Sorry. Um, and uh, the sound I don't think is coming through for, at least for me. Uh, and it seems like a lot of the people in Twitch are also not getting the sound coming okay. through. Let's see. Uh, share sound. I just found it. And... The sound is super funny. Oh, yeah. So we need this. Optimized oh. for video clip. Video thumbnails are minimized. Okay. I think I fixed it. Shall I restart from the beginning? Yes. Start, start from the beginning. Can you hear nope. that? Nope. nope. That's a little loud. Can you uh, get quieter? But I think we're good. Timer. We're not going to have a timer. Oh, There's, okay. It's... Right. Stop run. <laughs> okay. Stop run. Turn it down just a smidge. Okay. Uh, in terms of the audio. And I it think is we'll down. Be... It is down to twenty five percent now. Scooching and scooching together. Okay, so um, start from the beginning once more. Okay, uh, here we go. <laughs> okay, let me so know how pause. loud this is. Pa pause. <laughs> pause. That's good. Pause. Okay, so at the very beginning, I spent a couple of frames to turn on zip mode, which takes like a little bit of time, but the gain that we get from being able to use zips later in the run more than makes up for it. I'm not going to be able to explain all the zips that are going on, but I'd like to shout out Sundex, who did a lot of work documenting every single zip in the game and which ones were useful from a task perspective. So uh, there will be a lot of instances, if we ever see it, where instead of going forward to go to a destination, I will spend four frames turning around um, because one frame you need to let go of mouse click and another frame you need to click. So two frames or one thirtieth of a second is the standard time that it takes for a transition. Yeah. So I, I will believe spend the resolution on inputs is 60 Hertz, right? Yes. At least I put it at 60 Hertz. I would not be surprised if you could technically in scum VM push it to 120. I wouldn't dare to try that just in case it all goes awry. Though. And it's impossible to verify on YouTube since YouTube won't display 120. Yeah, this is accurate. Yes, correct. Uh, at least with on YouTube, we're able to display all 60 frames. All right, enough. Uh, so every so often, I'll, I might turn around in place, and that will take up four frames of time. But later on, I will be able to use that zip node to go from one place that's super far away to another place, and it will save however much time. So every time that I initiate a zip is like two transitions. And if I can take a distance that would normally take like three or four or five, I will initiate that zip and then use that zip again. So um, there's a lot of math involved in creating this task. You had to do addition of four frames. I have to talk about channel wood. I have to talk about the tree chunk stuff, which we'll get to eventually, but for now it won't matter. So for, oh, can you actually, I think this is going to be smart. Can you play this at half speed? So I sure imagine this is going twice the speed that you would expect. All right, this is um, now at half speed. This is now at half speed. So yeah, see, let's see if this is more comprehensible. Go for it. All right, I've unpaused. Okay. Sound, is, sound is good. We'll, we'll play it at full speed eventually, uh, I promise. Okay, so I'm flipping some levers. I've initiated stone Two of the three for stone ship. Okay, and okay, pause. I want you to pause real quick because there's one thing that I need to talk about. Oh, the match. So, there's a bunch of things that I need to talk about. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> First thing, if you go back uh, a fair bit back into the cabin, you may notice something that we don't usually see, like in the mist runs that you, you normally see a little bit more. Um, you're going to need to go back to, to when I'm turning the... All right. I'll, I'll, here's we are at the dock. Yep. All right. We're in okay. the cabin. Here, here we go. So right stop. There. You see how the wheel is turning very smoothly? This is entirely based off of the version of Scum VM that oh, we yeah, using. Oh, yeah. 2.0. I am using 2.0. Normally what it takes to turn the um, uh, wheel is it takes a, a, a squeaking sound that happens and it's very repetitive and it just takes forever. I partially considered using a version that requires actually waiting for that, that is incorrect implementation, but I just thought, whatever, it's like waiting for something to happen. And there's only one interesting technique that comes up in actual runs that makes it interesting. So I just decided to use the version that this saves on. That is the only time that Scum VM versioning matters in this particular run. Everything else is, is whatever. It's just very, very whatever. So to recap where we've gone so far, I flipped a couple of levers that were convenient to flip. The marker switch that's on the dock was convenient to flip. 
there were the only time that it was ever relevant to flip the uh, observatorium switch. I flipped that one. I have enabled two of the three uh, stone ship markers. Yeah, no, I have three. not. I have not set up stone ship. There's, there's no, a reason two of the three have been, have been clicked, but the last one, the leaf has not been clicked yet. The leaf has not been clicked. And there's a, there's a good reason for that. Um, and then we've entered into the cabin to start up the thing. Uh, and then we He's spinning the, the valve before he collects the match yep. just to show and off. I play for a little bit until we have the match uh, outside of the door, like a part where it's not <laughs> flicking constantly. All right, stop. Okay. So what's happening here is actually interesting as well. There are certain parts of the game where you have to wait for a sound to finish playing in order to continue on. Uh, this isn't technically relevant to how the game plays because you're going to have to wait for this no matter what. But I was playing this on a Linux VM where I wasn't able to get sound through. And the way that I actually got sound onto this particular encoding, I had to finagle with it a little bit and I had to record it ahead of time. It was, it was a whole thing. So imagine this, instead of doing what you would normally do in a run like this, which is wait for the sound to end and then click, I had to you know, make a save point at the very beginning of leaving the door wait 60 frames or 70 frames or whatever, and then click. If I was able to click, I started back at the beginning and then I did it one frame less. And then I had to keep doing that frame by frame to squeeze as much time as possible coming out of the door. I think it ends up coming out to being about 59 frames for this particular leaving of the door. Um, this is part of the tasking process. It didn't have to be strictly, I could have set save points that were, were a little bit ahead, but really, because sound doesn't work on like a frame by frame level, I had to basically make guesses until I got the optimal solution. And that's like just leaving this cabin. I spent probably 15 minutes on. So <laughs> um, uh, cont continue on a little bit. We'll get to the stone ship section. So you'll be able to pause at your leisure. Oh, well, that happens. We'll play this at full speed eventually because the sounds are way funnier at full speed. Um, oh, pause, pause. Oh my God, I almost forgot about this. This is exciting. Okay, so <laughs> you may notice the solution that's on there is wrong, isn't it? Isn't it like mm -hmm. two, two, three? It should be two, it's two, one, three. It should be two, two, one. It should be two, two, one. Okay, here's something super funny. So the only animation that's skippable in Scum VM is the lever coming back up animation. However, when you skip that, it also skips the wheel turning animation, but it doesn't fix the symbol that's on it. So in order to save time, it necessarily has to display the wrong solution, even though it says it's okay. So that's a small little thing that didn't, I thought it was super funny, but, but uh, it puts in the wrong solution because I, I have to save, I think it's something like eight frames per every time the lever goes back up. Um, it's a weird bug that has to do with cutscenes. Get there. So uh, feel free to continue because we'll, we'll get to the, the stone ship raising part, which is sort of relevant. Okay, uh, here's the selenitic stuff. I, you have to wait for this. There's no way to skip this. So that's why it drags on in comparison to the rest of the run. Now stone okay. ship is open. Stop. What's just happened, um, because I've set the channel wood tree up, I have set it at tick 25, which is the maximum amount of turns that you can get the wheel. I think it's 25. It's something yeah, like that. Sounds right. Um, and so every two seconds, the tree will try to go up one tick, right? It goes cha chunk, right? However, if it's unable to do that by way of some sounds playing or something like that, it will wait until whatever sound is finished and then go. So sometimes a kachunk will take four seconds or eight seconds or what have you, right? So in this particular instance, we've only had two kachunks, but it's been like longer than that because the time that it's taken for like, as we saw down there, that really long stretch of time where we were waiting for the lights to turn on in the generator room, um, the kachunk was trying to happen. It was queued up, but it was, there was still sounds playing in the game that had to be waited for. So it extended until after that, right? So Imagine anything that takes longer than two seconds, that's pretty much a ka-chunk that I have to deal with, right? Uh, here's another instance. This stone ship raising, we'd love to have more ka-chunks, but it's not an option that we have. So we just get one and it will happen right after the, the raising sound plays, right? Um, 
So feel free to, to continue. I don't exactly remember where we go after this. I think it'll end up being channel work. I think I'll probably do a little bit more work. Which by the way, that uh, chunk timing is abused in RTA as well. It's built in the RTA routing. In the RTA routing, it's on human ability to get that stuff done. Yeah. For this, there's a lot that I have to talk about because yeah. there's also inter-age ka-chunk planning. Yep. Which I'll get to. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is at half speed. So imagine how unbearable this. Okay, so now we're sending it back down again. That smooth movement is entirely down to uh, waiting for that. Yep, I hit the button as fast as possible, um, and then we wait until we until we get to go down. <laughs> so here's here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to set the speed back to full until we get to this point, just to hear all the sounds and for people who can watch to watch so, all the, the visuals. So you want to rewind to the start and play this start second at 50. the beginning. And we're going to watch this first minute. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Minute zero, second zero to second 50. Here we go. Yep. That's pretty much it. That's the most intensive part of this speed run that I had to plan out is, is that first minute. I don't know how long it took me, but it took forever. The rest of this pretty much speaks for itself. So I think we'll, we'll be fine for watching at full speed from here on out. Okay. There will be some times that I'm going to tell you to stop so that I can explain some things and it'll come up later. But um, um, let's say channel what I think plays out basically like RTA just frame perfect. With zips. There's more zips. That's the super important part. Again, shout outs to Sundex. Um, did a lot of work on the, the zips that you can plan out in Channelwood. I have no idea how they work. I just had a list handed to me and I was like, all right, sure. And yeah, they save time. So uh, we can feel free to watch this at full speed. It's no- Here we go, problem. Channelwood really fast. Mm -hmm. And again, super sorry about the photosensitivity. It's rough on my eyes, and I'm not particularly. I hope you all enjoy Channelwood. And that's Channelwood. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, what happens here is I'm going to hand in, I think just the one page cause I'm saving the page for another time. Okay. So now, okay. Pause. We went to mechanical in case you missed it, but we'll back up a little bit. <laughs> we more importantly, I set up channel wood for the tree to start going up. And then I went back to mechanical before I had a chunk. Yep. So here's the next part of the chunks that is super important. Um, the tree does not rise when you're on another age. Unlike iOS, where we sort of talked about that, um, on the original game, because you're not on the original age, it doesn't care about the kachunks. So it makes sense. Like, HyperCard's not going to be able to handle that. So um, if you pause, by the way. Um, yeah. uh, so what I have to do is I have to figure out how many sections of two seconds long each I can get away with per time I go back to Mist Island. So some things take less than two seconds. So I can do that without having to spend a kachunk, right? Um, uh, but some things are always a guarantee. Like I think every time that you come back into Mist Island, I think there always is a kachunk necessarily because of that intro cutscene where you're looking at the, the ceiling, right? Uh, so that necessarily has a kachunk. But putting a page into a book, I I think with the setting that I have it put at this second time, which is 24 or 23, something like that, um, instead of two seconds, it's like four seconds. I think I think it's four seconds. So basically, um, if I want a kachunk to happen, um, putting a page in a book won't have that amount of time happen. It won't be long enough. However, if I put a page in a book and then a second page in a book, then that will be. So 
I waited for that red page to activate for later. I put it in the library for later because I need at least four kachunks to bring the channel wood back up. And because I have to wait for that time anyway, I want to have the least amount of kachunk time to happen without me waiting for a cutscene, if that makes any sense. <laughs> so I'm going to be spending as many long actions as possible with the channel wood tree either going up or down. I think I actually set it going down because I have too many long things that I have to wait through. So um, we'll, I'll, I'll mention those when they come up, but you can at full speed hear a little bit of a kachunk before another sound cuts it off in the task. So um, yeah, feel free to go through mechanical. Mechanical sort of speaks for itself. Um, you can play it at full speed, I think. Okay. It's uh, going to go by real quick. <laughs> yeah, it's it's mechanical. So although the, the combo entry is fun, we'll see that. Yeah. Um, Here we go. That's mechanical. A little, <laughs> a little fun. So yeah, that's mechanical. Um, yeah, I'll, so I'll talk about this in live time and then I'll tell you to pause if I need to, okay. to talk about more things. But I think I've got everything. So at this current instance, once I put in that second page, a kachunk's going to happen. Back to mechanical. You, you heard a little squeak of it. I don't know if you could even Yeah, I heard that. it. Okay, cool. Um, so now we've skipped again to mechanical. Now we're going back into blue. We're going to leave again. So we've got one kachunk that's sort of cute. We've, we, the, the tree is one level higher after having gone back in the mist. Yep. Um, I think I'm going to be picking up the second blue page to yep. get another kachunk. Yep. So now we're going to have a second one. Stone ship. That one might not have been audible. I bet you there was a, a door creak that interrupted it. Uh, stone ship again sort of speaks for itself. Um, okay, I'm gonna pause. Uh, yeah, feel free to to keep it going. Um, I don't think there's anything in particular. Okay, stop. Actually, got it. Go, going back to the generator. Um, the generator. I had to look into the code to figure out how much time I would have needed. Um, and how the generator works. And as it turns out, um, the generator after, I believe it's a perfect quarter turn, um, before it does like a quarter turn or a half turn or something like that, it will have no power on the batteries. So you need to have at least that much turning. But then, oh, I think it's like every four frames after that or something like that, there's, there's some combination. Um, it will give you 60 frames of power or like a second. So as it turns out, I can turn it the minimum amount plus a little bit, and that will handle the rest of my experience on the island. So I don't need to touch it again. Um, oh, wait, does mist need to have the generator twice or is it the flower that needs to be pressed twice? In the, we'll find out. I it's, believe mist, a masterpiece needs the generator cranked twice. Okay, well, well then we'll, I guess we'll see that. Um, so the, the generator, I actually had to look at the scum VM implementation of it to understand exactly what I needed. And it turns out it was rather simple. So uh, there was a lot of planning I was expecting to do, but didn't need to do it. So this is just turning the generator the minimum amount. So yeah, feel free to go. Here we go. Is this half speed? It is half speed. <laughs> you could have it be full speed. It's, it's funnier that way. All right. Full speed it is. Here we go. And again, a lot of this waiting at certain cutscenes literally comes down to the fact that the game won't let you go until that sound is finished. Um, so we're gonna put a page in the book, but a kachunk doesn't necessarily happen. I think because we're going into Selenitic, after this, a kachunk a happens chunk. and yep. then you enter the book. Yep. yep. So uh, we'll be doing Selenitic. Selenitic's super funny. I'll just be quiet for this because the sounds are, are super good. Oh, I forgot about Maze Runner. <laughs> Maze, Maze Run, optimal Maze Runner is hilarious. As low effort as it is, it's extremely good. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's all you need to worry about. Which, by the way, it's basically impossible to do Maze Runner at that speed with uh, the current implementation. You, it's too easy to accidentally get the main menu. Yep. And there was another kachunk. That one was definitely audible. Yeah. Um, so we're up to four. So now the door is at the level where you can enter it. So I think we'll be entering Channel Wood 2 after this second go for Selenetic, um, where we'll get to see this again. 
you turn right because it's a spiral basically if i remember the maze correctly it's basically a big spiral uh so right. now mm -hmm. the tree door is at level height so i'm gonna probably run into log cabin oh no i'm gonna do stone ship stone ship again so i i probably need the fifth chunk in order to be able to send the tree back down because otherwise if you run immediately into it the tree is going up so i have to give myself enough time to turn it down and then um once i leave the cabin that's actually another kachunk so you have to have it go five levels up instead of four so um i bet you now I probably go into channel wood. I don't, although I probably don't strictly need to. So I'm going to go into, yeah, I'm going to go into the lag cabin, turn it off. And then this is another kachunk. And then bam, we're in. So, and then this is me. <laughs> just drawing with the cursor. Everything. Funny enough, you can play in real time as well. It's just, it doesn't come up often enough uh, for it to be fun to do, so. I love how all the door noises just run into each yeah. other on the blue face. Because <laughs> you're skipping elevator noises, and so the sounds keep going because there's no reason for them not to. Um, so once we've done this, are we done? That's it. Yeah, we are. Here we go. Okay. So <laughs> the smiley face is actually a rare. It's not my idea. I wish I was clever enough to come up with the smiley face. Um, if you. Yeah, if you want to pause, feel free, because the rest of this is, is just the standard mist. Yeah. Um, back in 2015, 2014, there was a task member named Cepheo who programmed the task for Mist DS because it's a lot easier to program for those consoles because the tools just existed for them, whereas on PC, they weren't quite there yet. Uh, so the first ever Mist task is actually a DS task. Um, and their screenshot for how they the, like the best frame that they thought they had for the game was the smiley face on the fireplace. <laughs> um, and the, the reason it is so good is because it's not something a human would ever do. Not because it's, it's like something that a task could do. Cause in theory you could do that. And, and you have enough leeway with the buttons. It's just too hard. It's, it's not something that saves any amount of time. It's just something silly the tasks do that a human would never dare to try to lose time on, right? So um, I always, I, I think it's just the most entertaining part. And it was a good inspiration for me because I was like, man, I wish there was a, a missed task on PC because um, the DS one was the only one around. And then I was like, oh, it turns out LibTask could do that. And I made this in 2019, I think. So yeah, when we discovered that we could get scum on Linux and that LibTask also it was basically yeah. we had to task it on Linux, I think. Yeah, the we had no um, choice. The, the tool is LibTas. Um, shout out to the developer who I, I can't quite remember the name of. He's super cool. You could um, you could talk to him about getting any game working with LibTas, and he'll put in enough effort if you're willing to put in the effort. It's super super good. Uh, it's really the only way that you can get PC tasks, and they're extremely rare. So uh, the fact that we have a missed one is is a uh, is a godsend. So yeah. shall we switch over to Riven? Yeah, switch over to Riven. I don't know Riven quite as well. There is a couple of things that I could talk about. This um, one is actually uh, courtesy of one of our Canadian friends, Scoobery Doobery. Scoobery also... Doobery. Yeah, he formerly held the world record on any percent uh, for Real Mist Masterpiece Edition. And then he just stopped doing this stuff. And then he came back pretty recently and he was like, hey, I can do some things. Um, he's half working on the exile task which is actually super interesting. We've seen bits and bobs of it uh, because Exile, you have a lot more freedom in where you can move your camera. Um, so at some point we expect to see an Exile task once he gets around to uh, unscrewing up his, his, his computer because I think he lost a bunch of data and it sort of sucks. Um, but there's a bunch of things that we were working on in regards to that. Uh, but yeah, he decided to make the, the full Riven task. I made an impossible task. Uh, impossible ending being guessing the the code to shove the the telescope in, but this is the best ending task. And so there's a couple of things that I actually worked on that I can I can talk about. So uh, yeah, we can. Okay, so another thing, this is twice as bad as Mist because in Riven you can do an input per frame, and in Mist you do an input per two frames. So this is going to literally even worse <laughs> twice as fast. It's going to be 
more incomprehensible. Sorry, I don't know. What to I'll turn you. it. I'll turn it down to half speed, so at least just turn it down to half speed, so that we can know what it was like with mist. Sure. All right. Yeah, go for it. Uh, this is, is half speed. I'm not making it up. Hold on. Let's try that one again. The sound was weird for a second. Is this sound? Yeah, there is sound. I oh, can it's turn very it quiet. Turn it. Turn it back up. Yeah. Here we go. How's that? Yeah, that's good. Okay, so we've done a bunch of introductory stuff already. Oh, yep, and now we're returning the island. Yeah, so this is this is half speed. This is half speed. If you have ever watched an any percent run, you can have a vague idea of what's going on here. I I'm not going to be able to guide you through this because I'm not sure I could guide you through myself. But basically, this is the standard Riven any percent run except sped up. There's a couple of, of Riven zips. Actually, if you want to pause, because I'd like to talk about that. Um, they're much like Mist, there are zips in Riven, but they were never used because they were never thought to be as effective. However, um, uh, there was someone said something along the lines of um, Riven zips save 30 frames because um, it saves like 30 inputs that you would normally have to do. Um, and Jaffris, big shout outs to Jaffris, he was like, okay, 30 frames in the task is 30 inputs in real time. Let me see if I can make use of them. And as it turns out, he totally could. And he blasted the previous record, which is a 550 something. And it's now a 523. He saved 30 seconds from a, an idea from this task, uh, which is remarkable. That's really kind of the point of a task is to try to give ideas to people to see if they can be able to use them. Uh, the missed one so far, no dice. But uh, the fact that the Riven one was able to be used to such effect is, is I remember cool. when we were ta when the task was going on that we found the way to turn on the debug flags in Scum VM so that you could see hot spots and where you could click them, and I remember us finding what we thought to be a hot spot that was like zipping from the upper <laughs> tier down to the floor in Jungle in Jungle Island, and we spent like half a day figuring out what it was trying to tell us. We're like, oh, we could skip the elevator. No, it, it's a lamp. It's, it's a just lamp. a lamp. But we were excited for a moment. <laughs> yeah, we spent a lot of time on, and then we realized it could be used for RTA. So uh, that's really kind of what tasks are for to some yeah. extent. Oh, it's also a good meme. So anyways, back to half speed nonsense. Here we um, go. Uh, there's one thing that I'm going to be able to talk about, and it's in regards to the dome code. Yeah, this is how you know it's half speed. Um, when we get to the dome code, we're going to need to frame advance through that because it's unbelievable otherwise. It's something that you wouldn't think is possible, and it's going to take me like a fair bit of time to explain. Um, but yeah, otherwise, we're going to be continuing on plotting in at one frame a second. There was a child for a very brief amount of time. Uh, we're going up and down and up and down. And it's, it's the standard rhythm thing um i wish scuba is here to, to talk a little bit more about this but i i think he'd say the same thing which is basically it's just a lot of the same ribbon inputs um because unlike mist there isn't stuff that you have to plan out it's very much more linear i guess um it's another unskippable cutscene or partially unskippable cutscene uh yeah so all right we're coming up on the dome code yeah here close enough oh, yeah okay so frame advance a couple of, okay so first of all here's the scope skip which is used in standard runs basically if you press on the first frame or like the first within the first three two or three happens, frames yeah mm -hmm, um it will be the correct position so you're actually able to use that in a task you don't have to do any amount of waiting uh keep feel free to frame advance uh yep okay so now he's going to enter in the code no, he just pressed the button. Yep. So what's, hap <laughs> what, what's happening here? And I'm going to have to... So You'll, You can see it in the title. This actually <laughs> says seeded, seeded best ending. Best ending. Um, uh, so the seed that's being used is in reference to the random number generator. The random number generator uses an input that's based off of something that's sort of random, like the, the time clock of the computer. Um, and uses that to make a bunch of random decisions. Riven has these that, you know, Mist doesn't. So it has the random dome codes, it has the scope code, it has the random prism code, right? Um, as it turns out, you can manipulate that. And especially in Scum VM, you can set the system clock to any amount of, I think it's down to the nanosecond or something like that. 
That sounds right. Yeah. So I did a little bit of studying with the RNG generation and I figured out, okay, if you start the, the game at this particular set of milliseconds and you keep going, you will get a dome code that is one, two, three, four, six, which at the time I thought was optimal because if you read the code, it checks for all these things. And then it makes an exception to make sure that one, two, three, four, five doesn't happen. And I was like, all right, if one, two, three, four, five, which is the default place where the sliders are, isn't possible. One, two, three, four, six saves the most amount of time because you only have to move the slider once. And then when you press the button, that slider only has to move over once. And so I had that code, I had it all figured out, saved a bunch of time. Then I believe it was Coder Joe said, that's not what it's checking for. Someone made a mistake. And as it turns out, because the code is flipped inside, like the, the slider code, it's flipped in representation in code. But someone didn't think of that. Someone thought, all right, we're going to get rid of one, two, three, four, five, when they should have checked for 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. And so as it turns out, by doing a little bit more digging with the RNG, it was possible to find a time to start the game at where not touching the sliders is an option. And this saves probably something close to half a second over the entire run because you have to enter the dome, I think it's twice. And so by not touching the sliders at all, you can just do that. I don't know if anyone's ever encountered this having played Riven. The problem is, I don't know if it's actually something that existed originally in Riven or it's a bug when it was ported over to Scum VM. I don't know what it is, whatever it is, it's super funny. There's also an exception that I had to make in regards to the RNG because the one RNG seed determines the three things. Uh, when I get to the telescope, I'll explain it. And it turns out it wasn't a problem. Um, but when I get to the telescope, I also had to factor in the telescope codes, none of the buttons being the same twice in a row. Um, I'll explain why that's, that's a time save later. But yeah, this particular game, it's seeded because when you start at this particular time that it says, and there's actually quite a few times that you can start it at, you can just not touch the sliders, push the button, and accidentally get it. So feel it's free to continue. It's super cool. <laughs> we were so excited. We were all way more <laughs> excited than we had cool. any right to be. Oh, it was by the way, I might as well speed it up because uh, here's the biggest... The biggest time the loss is, is this man. The linking book you brought with you. A minute and 15 of the two minutes 41 is Gen talking. Mm -hmm. Thank you. This is a nice rest. It is. <laughs> it's just, it, it, if anything else, it does serve as proof that this is not, you know, sped up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At this point, it's not sped up. Yeah. Uh, you'll also see. Um, we talk about getting into the trap book early. Uh, this does it basically the, the soonest you can do it, which you would not think that you could click on the book when he holds it out to you, but the task is frame perfect and he's not even going to have it that close to you by the time we get in. Yeah, it's... it's. Um, I know there's a setup that you can do somewhere where you can put your cursor and then you just mash there, but the task does it so much more quickly. It does it the frame that that... Yeah box is active so he doesn't even get it out of his <laughs> there it is yeah all right back to half speed back to half speed yeah uh we'll skip ahead there we go all right there's there's like three seconds of, of black nothing has to get away for, which is weird Here's another unskippable cutscene that we don't know why it's unskippable. Um, the prison code, while it is random, it actually doesn't matter in terms of time save. So that was just, we just left it, whatever. Just save Catherine, no big deal. Yep, okay, so now, oh wait, does it matter? Okay, go back to the telescope code. I might've been wrong, I could have sworn this mattered. So yeah, pause. Okay. So yeah, okay. So frame back. You're gonna need to One, go like ten frames back. Two. Four. Five. Okay. 
So okay. in fact, you can read it out. So it's four, five, two, one, two. Four, five, two, one, two. Okay, yeah. So you can notice that there's no like four, four, one, two, one or something like that. It's four, five, one, two, one. And I, this is actually sort of important uh, in terms of uh, the, the task because if you have a code where there's two that are the same, you have to wait for the button to come back up in order to press the next button. Whereas if there, if you do like four to five, you do click, unclick on four, click, unclick on five. There's no waiting. There's no having to skip anything. And it saves, you know, one, you know, you have optimally, you know, it's like 10 frames to do the whole thing. If you have four, four, one, two, four, that'll take 11 frames. Um, so I made it, it very precisely in, in my, in my seed searching that I would find a millisecond value that would also not have anything where the numbers next to each other would have been the same. Um, but that's the bulk of the work that I did on, on ribbon. So then the rest of this is just waiting for the end. Um, the, the thing about best ending, because he never reads the book, does he? He never reads the ending. I think he might have been in the lab and looked at the book. I honestly don't remember. I think he actually did for sake of, you know, congruency. He did not. Sake. I know why. Because if you, if he has a run that's called RTA comparison or something like that, that's a couple of seconds longer, where he does look at the book. And the I know Sundex was considering starting his computer on a certain millisecond to see if, if he could replicate the exact same thing. It was never going to work. But I, I knew it was possible that you could save a couple of seconds if you guessed the dome code, which is not an option. It's just not, right? Um, so, yeah. That's uh, our task work to date. That's our task work to date. Um, we, have, we have the tools to make exile work. Um, Which time? Where's Catherine? Revelation. I don't know if Revelation is even well, worth it, but we'll see. So <laughs> shout outs to Exodus and Coder yes. Joe, who are both working on Mist 4 toolkits to hopefully yep. enable this sort of thing sometime in the future. Uh, it's optimistic. The, it's optimistic, but it's a, at the moment. it's a possibility. It's a possibility. Yeah. So you might be able to see something like this for Exile very soon. Revelation sort Maybe of depends. Maybe someday. Um, Mist 5 would be super interesting, but I think the very little work that I tried to get Mist 5 working in this sort of thing didn't end up panning out. Yeah. I think Mist 5 might be the most uh, fascinating for me because you don't click through a lot of things. Well, you, actually, that's not true. You absolutely do click to skip some things. But um, there's other things where like falling through the elevator, you might be able to do much more complex stuff. Uh, but I don't anticipate that happening anytime soon until unless... So one of you out there wants to put in the legwork to do it. And then Uru, people people mod Uru. I could see something like this working for Uru. Oh, yeah. Um, that sure. would be super fascinating, too. But um, for the moment, that's that's sort of on the back burner. So, yeah, um, I know this is aggressively nerdy. <laughs> I, I, it's I it's how this, we roll. I know this is the sort of thing where it's like, oh, my God, they talked for how long about this? But um this is the sort of stuff that I'm, I really, this is my wheelhouse to some extent. And uh, I, I like getting roped in on this task work. Um, uh, for example, I'm going to be helping out with Voltaic um, in Exile. That's another thing that's randomly generated. Oh, there, yeah, the there's, Tesla generator. There's a lot of work that's been put into figuring out exactly what the optimal solutions for that would be when the time comes. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, Join us I if think... you're a coder and you love the deconstruct uh, scum VM and residual. We would love your help. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, we'd look forward to that. But uh, we're moving on to is it Mist Five? Is I believe it's Mist Five cut and that'll be no cut scenes. It? I cool. think, so. and then on to the uh, chill out and Q and A time. Yeah. Uh, thanks for hanging out. Um, burn it. No, I'm not going to do that. No, but... don't. Not there. <laughs> But y'all have a good event. Yeah. All right, Edigo, if you're here.
Oh yeah, the um, the tablet is not very clever. Um, Atagote might do some interesting things with the symbols, but probably not. Um, you can omit quite a lot of information from the symbols you draw and they'll still be correct. It's actually quite wild. Um, regarding skipping Escher's cutscenes, I might, I might as well explain it now. Um, while we wait for to get to get set up, uh, we have modded the game. Uh, to completely remove the uh, all the all the cutscenes, uh, all the times where someone is talking. I gotta close my door. Oh, Atticus here. Hi. Uh, I've just been intermittently. But I'm here now. I'm ready to go. Just have to close the door. Oh, Kidoki. And now, Zoom. Okay, come on, Zoom. Let's go up here. Let's go hang out up here. So I'm okay. ready whenever Let's you go. are, Cat. Cool. I'm ready. Right. I was just explaining what uh, no cutscenes means. <laughs> and a quick fun fact, this was the game that got me into Miss Speedrunning. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, we have a mod that removes all the cutscenes from the games. Uh, it's not cheating if we say it isn't. Uh, we are allowed to make up whatever rules we like. Wait. And we have decided that this is, this is a valid ki uh, category. Uh, you will notice that it does say any percent no cutscenes at the bottom. Wait a second. Um, I need to make sure that I actually I actually forgot if I have this installed or not. You don't know if you've got the mod on. Oh no. <laughs> that um, I was supposed to check that. Oh my gosh, everything's just going wrong today. So show if it should be. If I go to it, it's in bin, right? And what's it called? Oh, wait, oh, no, I'm looking know. in Mr. Forest files. Ugh. I've never run cutscene this. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, there is a vanilla category, but it's like 13 minutes long, I think. It's, it's a lot longer because the cutscenes take forever. <sighs> okay, okay, okay. You've actually never run Mist 5, it looks like. Uh, I have never submitted a run, now. I have played it... Um, I have tried to learn the speed run, but I could not get the tricks um, to work consistently. Uh, because I'm clumsy. <laughs> I find these sorts of precise tricks to be actually kind of difficult. Uh, everything going wrong equals much entertainment. Uh, flashbacks to last year. <laughs> um, I know you guys were having fun. I wasn't. <laughs> oh, come. Are you, uh, uh, you need permission to perform this action. I, I already have the permission. 
Oh, the windows. Uh, Why is windows uh, like this? Yes. Yes, I, I, I give it I give it the administrator thing and it's like you need permission. <laughs> Freaking windows. Yeah, good. We've got the we've got the patch. Atticoot is just trying to install it. Okay, it's in. It's in. It's in. Excellent. Okay, here we go. Missed five on the other screen because it doesn't want to go on my main screen for some reason. Here we go. Okay, missed five. All right, time starts and oh, I have to turn on the live split. Can you all still see okay. the live split? Uh, yes, we can see the timer. Okay, time starts in three, two, one, go. Oh, go, go. Okay, so the time, timer. Well, does the timer start when you start moving? Oh, wait, it starts when you start moving. Oh, it's not going. It's not going. Time is not going. Oh, great. Also, I just realized that um, it's lagging because of the way I'm I'm capturing it in OBS. So let me just fix that real quick. Yay, technical issues. I'm just, um, my computer loves me today. It, it really loves me. Like, um, well, I might as well take the time to start explaining the, um, the speed run. So you will see that uh, despite running in classic mode, Atagoot is actually teleporting from. Uh, one node to the next. And that is because for some reason, if you hold right click and then move and then click to move, uh, the game teleports you to the next node immediately instead of uh, giving you a move animation but for some reason. So that gets abused throughout the entire run. Um, That's probably enough for now, actually. We'll wait for the um, actual run to get going. I am so sorry for all the technical issues today. It just doesn't want to be nice to me today. Yeah, Dark Shot says you're going to have to split manually. That's whatever. OK. OK, are we ready to go? Oh, we're going. OK. I think we are. Yeah, it's not a big deal. All right, time starts in three, two, one, go. So yeah, you'll see that Atticate is teleporting. That is because he's holding right click. Well, not, technically not holding. You no. actually have to press it and then... Uh, yeah, press it, let go, and yeah, right click, left click. This is an area where that can't happen. I should have done yeah. the classic mode warp there, but I didn't. And that's the first cutscene skip. Normally, Yisha comes and talks to you, but uh, we skip it. And Escher normally comes talk talks to you here, which yep. um, I actually, can I be honest with you? I, I use this cutscene mod for casual play as well, because <laughs> I just can't stand Escher's constant dialogue. Yeah, constant yammering. Oh, it's taking... not like everyone is eager for the, for the come to finish. You're not wrong, I yeah. And he says, and he wrong. says that he that he helps you, and he and none of what he said helped me. Well, okay, coming up, coming up is one of the other major glitches. Uh, this is called sea warping or sea jumping. Uh, basically, what happens is Atticus is going to go out of bounds here, and then use classic mode to get back in bounds somewhere else. And I believe the way it works, Skelly, please correct me if I'm wrong. But oh, game... shoot, I did the... Oh, oh no. I, okay, um, that's not I, what was meant to happen. If I'm completely honest, I did not practice this. <sighs> okay, so the way sea jumping works is when you're out of... When you're in free roam and you switch to classic, the game looks for the nearest node, and I believe it specifically requires a line of sight. Uh, so if you position yourself correctly, you can make it pick a node that... Is actually really far away. 
because that's see probably making fun you of me see. right now. <laughs> um, right, so that's he jumping. What was meant to happen at the bottom elevator is oh, we get cool music though. Atagoot was supposed to um, send the elevator up, but run past the grill before it comes up and shuts you out, and that is technically an out of bounds state. So you can just chill inside the elevator as it goes up and then walk out. Yeah, I don't know if it, that's how, yeah, I don't know if it works for end of ages like that, but probably does, so. Come on, get in, get in, get in, oh! No, he missed it, he missed it. Cool music that we don't hear. Yeah, there's no game audio. <laughs> uh, um, That's weird because I actually did check the audio this time. Everything was prepped at the last minute. Can you blame us? <laughs> um, so yeah, what's intended to happen here is you send the elevator up, but you walk through the grate before it shuts you out. And that lets you ride the elevator up out of bounds. So this is not going to be a great time, especially considering that the baro can be like really mean. So we're probably going to go over the allocated amount of time for this. I'm sorry. This is why you make safety saves. Yeah. Do you have a safety saves? Uh, no. saves? I should have made those. I, I, this is a less, okay. This is a lesson for the next marathon. <laughs> yeah. Next year we're going to uh, do dry runs. <laughs> Next year won't be a complete disaster. Yes. Okay. He got in. So yes. now the elevator will go up and you can see he can still move. So, and then he jumps out and now he's just going to fall all the way down to the Derevo chamber. And yes. here he is. And did you see jump back in? Yes. He jumped in. To yeah. It. So you see jumped back in bounds and now we're at Derevo and I believe we picked this island for the out of bounds that's about to happen. Yeah, there's some uh, you can do it really much anywhere, but it's the it's the easiest most on this bridge. One is here, so you just um, walk into the uh, gate and you pop out of bounds, whee! and then you run to uh, the other islands and see jump back in bounds, and now we enter the uh, the symbol. And there are ways to optimize this. Um, please don't be an idiot with me, Baro. Please don't be an <laughs> idiot with me, please. But it can go very wrong. Oh, I should have looked down. Oh, come on, bro. That wasn't cool. That was that was not cool at all. Uh, it looks like the stream call it. Oh, no. Is that on? The video quality has just gone down. Might, might have been because I actually had to do a desktop capture to this game because Mist 5 was not nice to the game capture. Oh, yeah. Looking at it on Twitch, the game, uh, the video quality is not great. Mist 5 is in 8 bits. Oh, God. Could you imagine? Apple 2, Mist 5, Dita. Work on that, please. <laughs> this one again. Yeah, is it actually it was... like, 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 not like showing at all on the stream? No, it, it's showing. It's just the quality has gone down. It was fine to begin with, but it has dropped. Thank you, Mr. Barrow. Took you so long. Uh, so yeah, what Adagot is doing there is he's waiting for audio cues from the Barrow to work out whether or not they've accepted the symbol. Because uh, they make different noises. If they like it or not. Yeah, the whole thing's pixelated. Yeah. And, and the end of the game is to free them, so... Yeah. Sometimes it just doesn't seem like they want to be free because of how much they deny the slate symbols. Mm. It's not as pixelated as the Apple II version. 
Oh, come on. Not yet. <laughs> come on. I'm hoping we can beat the game before it gets to that point. <laughs> come on, get through. There we go. Uh, is this the last slate? The last slate. Yes, it is. And then I'm going to look down. Uh, right, so we're pretty much at the end of the game now. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go... Uh, we're going to go to the, to the keep and activate all four slates uh, in one go. Oh, screw you. Or we would. I hate the borrow sometimes. <laughs> this is when I wish I wasn't speedrunning so I could just scare them with the snake symbol because... <laughs> They're being so... Uh, might as well be mean to them when they're being mean to me. If he doesn't get it one more time, I'm going to snake symbol just to be mean. <laughs> oh, my! <laughs> I hate that glitch. Oh, my mouse just doesn't want to go today. Oh, come on. Can we just be nice today? Nothing wants to be nice to you. Okay, that's it. We're snake symboling him. <laughs> oh, no. Because <laughs> this run's screwed at this point, so I might as well just screw around with the snake symbol just for the fun of it. If your mouse will let you. Yeah, I'm just going to snake symbol him to be mean. Watch him not recognize it. Now, oh, no, now recognize the symbol. There, that was... <laughs> I just, I had to be mean. I'm sorry. If he doesn't recognize a symbol after this, try I'm doing the um, the moon circle smaller. Thank you. Ooh, finally, but okay, the now... snake symbol was enough. It was enough okay. of a punishment. They didn't like it. <laughs> now we go to the keep and activate the four slates. And that will take us back to Kavir. Oh, come on. And now all we have to do is drop the tablet. And time is about to come up. And that's time. 10, 20, oh, that's <laughs> awful. <laughs> That is... the estimate was four minutes. Oh, I should have practiced missed five. This is just, this marathon <laughs> just went bad for me. I am so sorry for you all. <laughs> it's fine. Chat loves it, really. Uh, right, so that's the speedrun block. Um, thank you all for watching. Uh, and thanks to the Mysterium team for running everything. Um, you guys are the best. Thank you so much for running Mysterium every year. Yes, thank you to the Mysterium uh, uh, committee for running it. And thanks to the community for being here. <laughs> yeah, thanks to all of you for watching. It really is great to show off all our speedruns to all of you. And we're probably going to do this again next year, uh, assuming the committee wants us and uh, is happy to set it up, because I don't imagine most of us will be in Denver. I'm, I might be in Denver, so you might see me I speed know, I know in... I won't be in Denver. Yeah, but you might Bit see me speed point. running in Denver, So, because I do have a laptop. I can bring that with me. <laughs> 
Yeah, it'd be great to have you again. We can, uh, you know, we uh, we can figure out a streaming from uh, even within person or do something in the off season. Yeah, definitely yeah. want to do this again. Um, all right. So, all right. Um, anybody who's sticking around, we are going to be here for a little bit. Um, <clears throat> if you registered for Mysterium, you should have gotten an email that tells you a page where you can go to get the, um, uh, what is it? The, the zoom meeting that we are in. Um, and you can just join in, say hello and, uh, Ask questions, whatever you ask want. Ask silly questions. Exactly. Oh, yes. Ask us all the questions. Everything you've ever wanted to know. Why were Ada votes runs garbage? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Not any question. But, uh, but yeah, I'll, um, that the link is going to be up on that webpage in just a couple seconds. Um, as soon as I end the stream, I'll, uh, I'll put that up because I don't want anybody joining here while the stream is still going. No offense. <laughs> all right. Thanks, everybody.